Oh gosh. Um, you know, streaming is still my number one passion. Goat Simulator. I don't know if you've ever seen the game or played it. <laughs> I'm kind of plan out and try to be at the top of the category. So at least, you know, the discovery might be limited, but if new people are clicking on a game title, you're kind of near the top. I think in the first eight years of content, I would pretty much play anything and everything that kind of captured my interest. When we do something incredible on stream and it lives on stream, that's an amazing moment for everybody that was there, or maybe somebody that goes back and watches a VOD. But after that, it's gone, you know, and there's been so many times that I want to tell new viewers like they come in and they don't have that repertoire and they don't really know like what we're about or like who we are and what we've done that I want to say, oh, well, like, you know, this one time we did this in DMZ or like we pulled off this crazy gaming moment. But not being able to then like reference a video to like share that with them, it 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 it's a really bad feeling. Feeling, 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 feeling. 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 Thank you so very much for tuning into this podcast episode with Always Game Time. Okay, we have a hell of a conversation here. Me and Average had a great co conversation, but I can tell you something. This is this was so smooth. Not saying it wasn't with Average, but it was very smooth. It was very intriguing. As always, I'm trying to get the best, the best, the best guests on this podcast. And without your support, that will not happen. So each time you share, each time you like, each time you subscribe, this helps bring the podcast bigger and larger. And we can reach a wider audience and we can actually make some real change in the gaming market. Thank you so very much for, for watching. Here is the places that you can actually find Always Game Time listed right here make sure you check them out make sure you subscribe make sure you like make sure you donate to him if, if if you have the cash great streamer very entertaining now let's get back to it so how have you liked uh co content creation so far um well i've been in the game for a long time uh eight years and counting and i fell in love with more so the streaming aspect of things you know right out of high school um been gaming my whole life and a buddy turned me on to the whole live streaming thing and so i've been doing that for a long time it wasn't until november in 2022 that we were fortunate enough to really go full time with it and so you know streaming is still my number one passion but um i've learned as i'm sure a lot of creators out there know that if you're going to um grow and have any kind of longevity in in the industry a lot of uh it boils down to content creation and, and short form and long form videos so you know, it's been a challenge trying to learn that and kind of sculpt out what I want that to be for my community and I. Uh, and that's, you know, we're currently in the process of trying to figure that out. I don't know that I ever will, uh, but I really do love it. And i um, super lucky to be in the position that I'm in for sure. Have you, uh, you say, and this is just a question, had you, you say we, do you, are you, is, is there multiple people on, on the team or is it just you? For, for right now and you don't have to answer that if you don't want to <laughs> no no it's it's actually funny you mentioned it because people give me flack for that all the time um i think that when i speak about like always game time and like you know the stream and the community i always phrase it from that standpoint because to me i couldn't do what i do without their support you know so even though you know the show doesn't go on if i'm not live um, it, it really does speak volumes to, to what's important to me as a creator, you know, putting them first and emphasizing that community aspect. And, and so now it's, it's just me currently. I'd love it if we blew up, you know, I've, I've got big ambitions for AGT. I want to, you know, sweep the esports scene and help sponsor other creators and get them off the ground and, yeah. and things like that in the future. But no, yeah, it's, it's just me. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, that's that's the leadership me mentality. I mean, I I'm a project manager by by day, so I pretty much I'm always using the I'm always using we and us and you know the team instead of like first name you know ba basis on, on on a lot of different stuff. So that's always nice to hear so someone else kind of have that same mentality whenever it comes to you know a team or a community type of mindset. So that's always nice to hear. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. Uh, sure. when did you post your first video? Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a VOD upload from Twitch back in, this would have been probably 2015, 2016, um, straight upload from, you know, just a live stream, no editing, none of that. Um, and then I don't think I really started editing probably until about 2017. I started dabbling and making like highlight videos from the streaming. But yeah, that feels like ages ago. And what and what was the video about? Um, it was it was just a so me and my friends. I, I mentioned Kevin. He's he's the guy that got me into streaming at the time. I was streaming just for my Xbox, and uh, so I think we did some like Destiny together. I think Destiny was a big thing uh, at the time. 
And uh, so, yeah, literally, it was just, you know, raw gameplay, just two dudes talking over, you know, games. And it's changed a lot since then, for sure. Nice. What uh, what was your first niche that, that you were in? I see mm. that I see that you've been doing a lot of DMZ content. It's been working out great. I just want I'm curious to see like what was your first thing that you, that you did? Was it Warzone? Was it Call of Duty? Was it more broad? Uh, I'll give you the funny answer and then I'll give you the serious answer. The okay. funny answer <laughs> is Goat Simulator. I don't know if you've ever seen the game or played it. Um, I remember back in the day, Twitch even used to have a category specifically for console streamers. And so climbing, you know, the hierarchy and just discoverability um, was was really tough back then, too. But one of the things I had going for me was when you'd find a small game like that or a niche game with like 10 to 30 streamers, um, you could kind of plan out and try to be at the top of the category. So at least, you know, the discovery might be limited. But if new people are clicking on a game title, you're kind of near the top. Yeah. And so I remember Goat Simulator being kind of a breakout game for us that got us to like our first 500 followers on Twitch, which is hilarious and so much to a point that when I had done all the missions and achievements in the game, I actually like I went through and I wiped the memory just so I could keep streaming it because we were growing so much through it. Um, and I was like, I think I told Chad, I was like, I, I don't know what happened. But yeah, it was a whole thing. Um, but I've been a variety streamer for most of my you know, quote unquote career. I think in the first eight years of content, I would pretty much play anything and everything that kind of captured my interest from, you know, indie games to Minecraft to first person shooters, AAA titles. Um, and it wasn't until I had started streaming again and the release of DMZ where I kind of buckled down and chose like a game. Um, I never would have expected that to be Call of Duty for me, quite honestly. I've loved Call of Duty all the way since, you know, World at War, I think might have been one of my first real Call of Duty games. Um, but that being said, when we started taking off with uh, DMZ mode, you know, obviously just kept pouring back into it and it's been an experience unlike any other. I mean, the community around this new mode from Call of Duty is is pretty diehard and uh, amazing to be a part of for sure. And I actually didn't write this down. I actually don't have a question about this, but I'm curious. Um, I actually didn't talk about, I actually don't have a question about kick, but I'm curious about Twitch and how you just kind of said you have to be a little bit more niche to kind of get a little bit more attention to be at the top of that cat, that category. Um, what, what is your thoughts on that being a thing in Twitch and should there be something different? Sure. Well, I mean, I definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, no, it's a great question. I don't think that it necessarily works that way anymore. Um, you know, early in our conversation, I pointed out like having to make short form and long form for longevity and for discovery. I still do think that that's king. You know, a lot of people ask like, oh, how do I grow as a streamer? And I don't pretend to have the answers like more than anything. I just tend to feel pretty lucky to be where we are. But I do know that TikTok and YouTube played a huge role in a lot of our discoverability since we've started, um, you know, putting out more content. And so when it comes to growth and natural discovery through Twitch, I've seen that they started implementing um, a new featured clips thing, which is going to be interesting to see how that's going to impact discoverability. Um, But it's, I mean, it's tough, right? It's a saturated market. Like I said, I don't pretend to have anything figured out. I'm still trying to capitalize and and grow, you know, as much as I can through, through what I'm doing currently. Um, But yeah, generally speaking, you know, it's tough. Like it's a, it's a really saturated platform. And then you have kick to throw into the the discussion as well too. And that's a whole separate thing. Um, but a lot of people are, are capitalizing, trying to take advantage of that. And my point there with, with that platform, nothing against it. Um, I've actually done a few streams there myself, but I feel like people that are on kick are people that followed their favorite streamers to kick. So there's not a lot of organic and, you know, authentic viewership where people are looking for new streamers on the platform. So that doesn't help either. So really, I do kind of advocate and tell people like you got to create short form video content on more discoverable platforms that give people a preview of what you're like to try to draw them in. And it's it's a struggle. I mean, if you look at it as a funnel, you're getting like less than a percent of total impressions that are going to join you in your stream. And so that's a whole that's a whole thing. (laughs) Yeah, especially on TikTok, I, I, I feel like, have, have you, are you referring specifically to TikTok there or are you kind of, or are, are you referring to everything really? Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to have, you know, use all the tools at your disposal to try to gain exposure for sure. Um, and for me, you know, I tell people too, starting up just to circle back, like I fell in love with it first before it became about growth and analytics. And I think a lot of new creators yeah. kind of get bogged down when putting hours and hours in and some of them are working full-time jobs on top of it and they're not seeing the results that they'd hoped to see 
So that's a really tough place to be as a creator. And I, and I hate to see people's creativity stifled because of analytics, but um, mostly TikTok. Yeah, to circle back to your question, TikTok has been responsible for a large portion of our discoverability um, and also being able to utilize live streaming on that platform in conjunction with Twitch, was, which was a huge update um, when they when they started to allow that. Yeah, I've I, I'm actually going to probably well. There's a whole background behind it, which maybe we can talk about off off stream. But I, I have massive amounts of respect of people that can stream for more than like two or three hours. I'm I'm beat after like two hours. I I, I streamed on TikTok. I've streamed on YouTube. I've streamed on Twitch. The most I think viewers I've ever gotten was on TikTok, which is like 600 viewers, may, maybe at at one sitting. And I was just I was exhausted after like an hour or two. And that that was where I was like, all right, guys, see you later. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. So. I uh, I think you 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 stream for like what five five six hours a day. Yep, that's correct. Yeah, about twelve to five p.m. Eastern Standard. Sometimes a little earlier, sometimes later. Yeah, so that's yeah. I mean, I I caught your stream the other day, and I was like, man, I I just I was like, it makes me want to stream, and then I'm like, ah, I just can't do it anymore. I'm not, I'm not uh, <laughs> I'm not ready for it. Sorry, I had to turn my my light on. It's pretty dark. You're good. In here. Let me encourage you by saying like. It, I'm not immune to it either. Like I definitely, there is like a switch that flips the second I'm off stream. Not to say that I'm not my authentic self on stream. I would, I would actually think it's more me than when I'm out and about like in public, you know? Yeah. Um, but the second I go offline, I'm like slumped in my chair and I'm like, take a deep breath. I go yeah. downstairs and with my family, they, they can tell, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm wiped at the end of a long, a long day for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I get that way. Just making vi videos. Like I, I, I usually go through a marathon of making vi videos. So like I'll, you know, probably do a podcast or two and then I'll do some short form content for TikTok and YouTube and whatever. And it's like four, four, three, four hours of just straight up recording. And then I'm shot. I'm like, wow, that takes so much out, out, out of you. So, so I'm actually curious too at that, in, in that sense. And I'm kind of going out, out, out of order here. So if I ask the same question again, I apologize, no worries. but uh, it's, I'm just enjoying the conversation. So uh, that brings me to my next question, which would be like, you know, how, how did, you know, do you, do you edit after those after after those uh those those long streams and then you are you just shot or are you yeah because I know I see your videos have some kind of intro so are you doing those se separate prior or are you doing it after and again you you don't have to review uh, reveal all the secrets if, if if you don't want to but I was just curious for sure yeah no no real trade secrets it's definitely <laughs> a struggle um so what I'm trying to do currently this is something I strive for is I'm treating this because I am full time as like a kind of nine to five situation, you know, I go live around 12. So that nine to 12 is either spent working on, you know, countless number of things in my backlog for the stream, um, preparing and planning the day for the stream or recording and editing videos. Um, and the reason I try to do that towards the start of the day is exactly like you said, you know, after that long stream, I just want the energy, not not only that, but I take a break from streaming before doing any other kind of work in the evening. So if I am ever editing at night or recording for a video, it'll, it's going to be like 9 p.m. or later after, you know, wife and puppy have gone to bed and, yeah. and I just kind of slink back into my office. Um, but I just don't have the energy as much. And there's kind of that discontinuity between, OK, wait, what happened on stream today? Like, what do I need to capture? I would say, like, something that really helped me out is trying to be. And it kind of impacts the live show a little bit, but trying to be efficient in the sense that, you know, on stream, if I know I'm going to use something like for an educational video about DMZ or if I have something um, bookmarking that and then also like recording while live, you know, recording my intros while live is something that chat gives me a hard time about. Yeah. But <laughs> it's the only way like there's not enough time in the day. So I, I try to multi-purpose uh, content where I can. Yeah. Um, and just recently we're starting to do original not streamed content just for youtube that's going to be starting to get uploaded and so that's the situation and where you know waking up at like seven recording for an hour editing that down making a thumbnail so yep. yeah i think start of the day it works for me but um i know a lot of other creators who are on completely different schedules who like you know staying up you know late to do that kind of stuff but i just yeah i just can't <laughs> yeah no yeah i mean you definitely don't want to sac sac sacrifice sleep i mean i i have a child too so that that also doesn't help with the uh the content creation because you know usually i'm like finishing my day job stuff and then just like grinding and just getting a bunch of different stuff in. i mean i also don't play video games that much anymore but i definitely still you know game when, 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 whenever i can but a, a lot of my stuff is talking about games and where my experience comes from and whatever else and you know trying to hopefully wake up a lot of people's eyes on call of duty and how 
and how it's gone downhill since then. But we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> um, what video uh, got the most traction? Uh, let's start with TikTok first. That sure. like out, out of all the videos you've posted, what's what's the video that you can recall that got the most traction? So in the early days, TikTok is a wild platform, man. It's like you'll spend three <laughs> hours on a TikTok video and it'll flop and you'll spend no time at all on a video and it'll, you know, get a hundred thousand views or something. And so yep. it's not the most rewarding in the sense that it's a hard line to ride. Like, especially since I'm doing most, if not all of the work on the channel, I do have um, some support from my, my great moderator Artemis. I'd be criminal to not shout them out. Um, they've helped a lot in some of the video aspect, but yep. um, you know, it, it was kind of throw anything at the wall and see what sticks. And some of the early videos that did well were informational, like educational DMZ videos. So um, we did a playlist, uh, a series of videos, you know, showing off where certain keys would unlock rooms in the map. And, um, you know, people would respond to that pretty positively on TikTok. You know, they'd save the video so they could reference it later and they'd comment and they'd say like, thank you for this tip or whatever. Yeah. Um. So I remember those being like pretty big for us, at least to get us in a launching off point and kind of set us up as like, hey, like, this channel's about DMZ, at least for the time being, you know, like come come hang out with us and, and you'll learn something too. Um. Now I've kind of actually made a shift into more story related content, which has been so much fun to work on, but takes like exponentially longer to yep. make. Yeah. Um, especially trying to cater that content for the TikTok audience, which is, you know, um, more difficult than just throwing up a three minute video, right? Making those edits and everything. So um, I've had some of those do really well recently as well. You know, a couple hundred thousand views and, and people giving good feedback. So um, like I said, early days, it, it could have been anything like just throwing up videos was the important part. And now yeah. I'm really trying to hone in and and perf not perfect, but at least get better at what I do. And 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 storytelling is, is definitely something I'm trying to emphasize with my content. Yeah. Did you ever get a million views on TikTok? N not yet. No, I'm in the, the <laughs> elusive hunt for it. I'm I've got a great circle of friends and creators around me who are, um, you know, just really, really good at what they do. And I joke along with them and I'm like, man, one of these days I'm going to get one. Of, I'm going to get a million plus like one of these days. And, you know, it's it's the knowledge and the understanding that that's not going to change much for me. It'll be great exposure and people will come along for the ride and yeah. that'll probably build up TikTok. But it's almost like this validation as a creator to be like, oh, I had something that I knew was good and I turned it into something that did even better. You know, so I'm on the hunt for that. But no, I think our I think our most viewed video is like 450,000 views. So that's pretty good. Is, is that is, is that over a minute or is that less than a minute? Um, That one in particular is less than a minute. I think it's like a 20 second clip of me talking about. So they had um, back when Warzone introduced had like a, a golden sniper, one shot sniper for a, like a, I think there was a rainbow event. So honestly, it's been a yeah. while since I, but I made a little video just covering that. And I think it was like 20 seconds long and it did really well. So my, my longer videos, they tend to be hit or miss. So. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed that too, but, but I also do a lot of like talking on, on camera. So that, um, <clears throat> I, I've been kind of shifting the content, trying to be better on camera for like a longer per period of time, so that these podcasts aren't, aren't as hard. I don't know if you can tell; I have a little bit of a stutter, but you know, it's uh, I'm working on it. So let's see what <laughs> let's see where it takes me. Um, what video on YouTube got the most traction? Oh goodness! Um, <laughs> so recently, YouTube is an animal, man. I, that's the, that's all the parts I don't like about like editing and the unrewarding aspect of like throwing something on the internet and not getting views on it is in YouTube. So we're trying to rethink how we're approaching that right now currently. But um, before doing DMZ stuff, it was a rogue company video. So that was a game that I actually really loved and streamed quite a bit. Um, third person over the shoulder kind of shooter. Yeah. And uh, I had a gameplay uploaded relatively early on into that game's life with a sniper rifle. So my best guess is people like watching sniping gameplay and, and clicked on it for that reason. Um, tried to copy and, and ride that success and it, it did not work. Um, <laughs> but so that video did pretty good. I think it was around 28,000, 30,000 views for me. And then most recently with the DMC stuff, I made a guide on the Kashi complex, which is kind of a more obscure map that has, it's a little bit more difficult for players and it has like Easter egg type stuff to do in it in quests. So, um, I, I did a run where I did something pretty noteworthy at least from the dmz standpoint and um that video i think got around sixty thousand views which is probably my most watched video and it's more recent so you know that's hope. long <laughs> said, right yeah so it's uh it's actually believe it or not it's an unedited run from twitch like start finish 
Um, but the reason was in that particular case, there was strategy behind it. Like I didn't want to chop out stuff for people who were newer and you know, it was, a, it was a guide video. So, yeah. um, but yeah, yeah, that was like a 30 minute YouTube video. Nice. That's, that's, yeah, that's great. I, you know, but TikTok is TikTok and YouTube. If you're going back to what you said, TikTok and YouTube are a, uh, are, are a whole different an animal, like just on their own but yes yeah. it does happen both times i've had so many times where i put a youtube video up and it got you know i've spent like five six hours on it a short and it got you know 200 views and then it's like a video that i that took me 30 seconds to a minute to make almost a million or like a 200 000 or whatever so it yeah it's it, it is its own an animal but it's also in the end, it's rewarding in some cases, but then again, you know, again, the time you spend, you're like, why am I wasting my time at this point making this yeah. five hour video when I can't get a view? <laughs> if there was like a one to one, you know, if it was mathematical, it would, and it, and it made sense. Like, and, and maybe for like the big creators who haven't figured out, maybe, maybe it is, but like at my level, I certainly think it's, it's much more. I enjoy my experience a lot more when I just focus on the content side of things. It's like, throw it up because I like doing it and I want to share it with people and then try to ignore the analytics side of it because, you know, it's, I mean, it's literally a creative activity. Like I can't go in and, and try to do the same thing over and over and replicate success. Like that's not what I should be in it for. And I think that's where a lot of new creators come into it. You know, that's like, especially younger kids too, you know, every, every kid wants to be a YouTuber now versus like before <laughs> it was a rock star. Now it's a YouTuber. Yeah. Everyone's like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to do this and this. And then they kind of get crushed under the like, realization that that's not really how it works um so anyway long tangent aside um yeah i'm in i'm in a current process of just making what i like to make learning what that is what that looks like and the rest will sort itself out yeah i think i think it's this is actually something i, I wanted to kind of drill a little bit down into from what you said before i it, it's it might be more of the fame thing right like it's the it's the eyes on you type of thing which used to be rock star now it's youtube mm -hmm. because you get the eyes what, what what are your thoughts on that yeah i mean i just think it's i think it's something that i've seen be detrimental actually to a lot of people you know they're not ready for that kind of um exposure at, at several different levels in the process and and it kind of changes things for them and so it's you know, something I worry about for myself, but also just caution others. Like we live in a world where I feel like people are depending upon that, those views for validation or for, you know, a sense of meaning. And that's a scary place to be. Like, I don't know. I mean, you could probably correlate it to other things that aren't online on the internet as well too, but it's definitely something that, um, I see a lot of, and I'm exposed to just through, you know, the industry and line of work is like, and from a viewing standpoint too, like, um, little bit of a tangent side note but like i've worked with kids for a lot of, of my life and so i've seen kind of firsthand like you know they pretty much for the most part just regurgitate what they see on the internet hmm. and so as a creator there's a special responsibility and weight i place on my shoulders to be you know mindful of what i'm posting and the way that i model myself and my content yeah. um because yeah i think it's you know i just i i, I don't think it's great that being said, my job currently relies on it, so I got to be careful what I say. But <laughs> um, you know, I, I I I do think that the internet is both a great and a bad thing, and you know, it's 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 sad and scary to see people place a lot of importance into stuff that ultimately probably isn't that important. So, did you did you hear what happened to Tifu? No, I'm like the worst when it comes to being like up to date on any kind of internet anything. Honestly, but. <laughs> no worries. So. This is where I kind of want to ask this question too, since you said you work with kids and we're talking about kind of like the fame and whatever else. T Tifu started at a very young age. I think like it was 12 or something along those lines. He's like 25 now. Um, do you think, and he's, he's quitting, he's quitting just social media in general. He stopped streaming and whatever else. Uh, do you think that age has something to do with a lot of the fame that happens, like, and the effects of every stage that you go through? So, let's be honest. I mean, you're probably in a different stage than, than I am, but like you, you talked about early days stages where you're just kind of throwing things up, throwing the spaghetti at the, at the wall and hopefully it sticks, you know, and then you're kind of, now you've kind of found something that works. So now you're just, you're just going to work. You're going to run with it until something else works. Um, yeah. do you think that age has something to do with maturity and trying to deal with all that stuff versus, you know, getting, well, not versus, but getting, being really young and then just blowing up one day, being 15, 16, 17 years old. Do you, do you think that that kind of affects 
you know, not only you, but you know, everyone else around you in, 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 in like a certain way. For sure. Um, I mean, I would say when it comes to blowing up, I don't know if there's a lot of people that could be prepared for something like that. The rush of like, you know, seeing stuff explode. Um, <laughs> that being said, you know, when people ask me about streaming, one of the biggest pieces of advice I offer is trying to, in the early days, encourage people to focus on figuring out their content on their side of things. Like, what kind of streamer do I want to be? What kind of games do I want to play? Sure, that's important. But like, why am I doing this in the first place? What about this makes me happy? Like, what do I have to offer that makes you know me happy to show the rest of the world? And and like the reasoning behind all that, because I think it's really important. Like, if you don't have that idea in place before, you know, going and, and, and growing with with more viewers, um, you're going to be. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just I, I think it's important to be set up there first. You know, I, I I think that when you start to grow, things change a lot. And and I tell people all the time, like my commitment to my community is to show up <laughs> and I'm never <laughs> going to get everything right. And I and I know that ahead of time. Right. So just to be um, just to own that and, and to and to tell them, like, hey, this is an evolving process. It's never going to be the same. Like, it's always going to be changing. And um, I think that people don't really know that until it happens, you know, so the more that you can be firm in you know, what's important to you and your values and, and what your content is before you grow, the better I think you'll kind of transition to that. When it comes to younger um, children, I mean, I, I think like just look at like childhood actors, right? You know, yeah. and they talk openly about their experience. And and so obviously, I, I don't think that that changes much between like this industry either. You know, if people from a young age have those opportunities and all those eyes on them, it can definitely weigh on you. And um you know, even at even at our size, there's days where, you know, the internet has a lot of toxicity on it. And if you're like scrolling through TikTok comments and people are bashing you, like that can be a lot if you let it get to you. So um long answer short, I definitely think that um age preparation, like there's so many different factors that can that can impact how you receive growth and you know, your response to growth and, and how that can affect you. Um but yeah, I don't know. I feel like none of that made sense, but hopefully it did. <laughs> no, it did. It's especially that last part, just, you know, just growth in general. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, you have to be, you have to have tough skin. You have to be able to look at a comment of somebody saying you're fat, you're ugly or whatever. Usually right. those aren't that bad because, you know, I mean, unless you're like really get affected by it, like those are just mm -hmm. typical, like somebody is something going on with their lives and they're trying to make you feel bad so that they can feel better or they're trying to get yeah. you triggered so that they can feel better about themselves. Um, you know, at least that's in my experience. Like I've, I've had so much hate, you know, on, on YouTube whenever I make a video and, and some of them will come back around. I don't, I don't know if you've had that. Like I comment usually almost on every post on, on every com comment, at least, at least I try to, uh, there was a certain point where I got thousands of comments a day and it was like almost impossible. But, yeah. um, you know, I, I got, I got people on my side, like, Oh, I was really sorry. I was really, I was having a bad day. It's like, that's typically what it is, you know, or somebody's having a bad life and, that's usually what happens and they just start, they try to get you to feel bad too. Um, yeah. you know, have, have you ever had that where you've commented on someone else, someone saying something neg negative or do you, do you avoid negative comments? <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> there's, there's a limit for every creator. I'd like to think my limit's pretty high. Like I give people a lot of opportunities before we ever do any kind of like ban or anything on yeah. the stream. Um, for the most part, I lean into it. I have a fun time with it, you know? And if, if people want to, you know, be negative or try to hurt my feelings like it doesn't really do much for me on a personal level um that being said we try to foster an environment of positivity on our stream and in our community uh as well as inclusivity so if somebody's being like a bully then it's like all right listen like zero tolerance policy kind of thing yeah. um that being said one of the weirdest and strangest phenomenon i've observed on tiktok is people that will say something so objectively toxic there's no way that i could be misinterpreting it like it's literally like you are fat or like this is dumb <laughs> and so i will comment every once in a while i, I don't go into my comments that often and, and do yeah. this kind of thing but every once in a while i'll kind of snap back and i'll be like you know even even if it's a kill him with kindness kind of post and then weirdly enough they'll comment uh, like again like either the next day kind of like you said and they'll be like 
oh, well, I didn't really mean anything by that. Love your content, smiley face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 this is not how this works. <laughs> like, if you're going to talk about it, be about it. Like, I'm here for it. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, if you want to. Yeah. And so it's like this strange thing. But it's, it's I really do. You know, the internet, like I said earlier, it's a good and a bad thing. And people people utilize it to express themselves and, and share thoughts and without repercussion for largely, you know, internet yeah. anonymity is a very real and dangerous thing. And so people are just like not held accountable for their actions in a, in a large way. Yep. And I just, people just don't take time to think and comment either. You know, that's yep. the other part that's, that's tough is, you know, especially with like a TikTok audience, for example, I love TikTok to death. If, if any of you guys are watching, love you guys. But the attention span isn't always there. And what people will do is like three seconds into a video, they've made up their mind about a person yep. or what the video is going to do. And mm -hmm. they'll just comment instantly. And I had at one point, just as a funny little like creator to creator, I had one where there was something in the title or like the first two seconds I say something and someone commented and they were like, why didn't you say this? And I just was, I that was the day I stopped reading as many comments because I was yeah. just like, I'm never going to win. There was always going to be a child or some angry person. Yep. Like someone is going to leave these yep. comments regardless. <laughs> so I'm going to stop trying to cater to those people yeah. and just do what I'm going to do. Yeah. You know, and it's not that I have any ill will towards like the negativity and the people that are having bad days. Like I hope they find something better to do than to yep. leave those comments. But yeah, it's just not worth the time and the energy to try to fight back against those people. Honestly. Yep. Yeah, oh. that's that's funny that you mentioned that, but yeah, I mean, pretty much, I story story for for you as well. I um on YouTube, it this mostly happens, uh, but I I for a while there, I was I was just I just just was just trolling people, so like I was just throwing clapbacks at everyone that would say something stupid. So, I mean, I've had so many people like comment. There was like this. There was one thread I, I remember. I forgot exactly what I said, but it was something about his mom, right? It was he said something, and I and I and I said like your 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 mom doesn't think that or whatever, and just thread of comments of like people were like dude you have to do that to him you didn't have to do that to him you didn't have to do that to him. like just people yeah. just <laughs> it was so funny, but um you know I. I did that just like kind of as a troll because people were doing it to me. Like I, that was when I was getting like you know hundreds of thousands or millions of views on, on my videos. So like it was just negative comment after negative comment. Then you get the occasional like, "Hey guys, stop making fun of him." But the only time I've I banned somebody from my uh, from my channel, I think I made maybe two 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 people. One because they were being they were like harassing me, like they were just commenting things on every one of my videos, and then. Um, they were also starting to harass my other commenters. So I'm like, okay, you're done. Ban, you know, ban hammer. Like, cause you, cause you can ghost no. people from, from your channel and YouTube. I don't, I don't know if you could do that, but, or I, I didn't know if you knew that, but you can put them in like a, in like a, I forgot what section it is. It's in the community section on, uh, in, in the YouTube studio, but you can ghost them from, from your channel so they can comment, but nobody will see it. So oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah, great. That, it's great. And then that also helps for like, you know, for, for streams too. You could do the same thing. So, you know, if they're, if they're saying stu stupid shit, you don't even have to just ban them. You could just ghost them from, from your entire channel. So they can't comment on anything, uh, which is kind of, which is very use a very useful toy uh, tool. So, uh, but I, I, we kind of, we kind of like danced around this, but at the same time, I wanted to ask this like directly, because there's always, I, I, I want to hear like a straight answer. So, and I, I I apologize. You've been giving me straight answers. I don't want to make it seem like you have. No, for sure. Uh, do you care about views and growing on TikTok or YouTube? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I think that um, you know. So eight years ago, it was new, and it was you know this I this discovery phase, right? And and from there became a commitment to growth, and um, not just because. I wanted to do that. Like I've always wanted to be full-time content creation, but just because I enjoyed doing it so much. Um, and so now the lens has shifted. All of that is still true, but there's additional from a business standpoint um, strategy and, you know, strategically trying to um, use this momentum to ultimately secure myself as a creator in this role, because I do love what I do, but also to expand our reach as large as possible, you know, um, impact as many lives as possible. And so when it comes to TikTok and YouTube, it is pivotal, I think, for longevity. Um, you know, I could go live every day, stream eight hours a day and, and just do that till the end of time. And there's probably going to be like a natural fall off. Um, and so I know that 
capitalizing not just for growth, but also, for example, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you like this. When we do something incredible on stream and it lives on stream, that's an amazing moment for everybody that was there or maybe somebody that goes back and watches a VOD. But after that, it's gone, you know, and there's been mm -hmm. so many times that I want to tell new viewers like they come in and they don't have that repertoire and they don't really know like what we're about or like who we are and what we've done that I want to say, oh, well, like, you know, this one time we did this in DMZ or like we pulled off this crazy gaming moment. But not being able to then like reference a video to like share that with them, it 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 it's a really bad feeling. Like as a creator, like I want that to live on longer. So the main inspiration for TikTok and YouTube was to be able to challenge myself to capture those moments and and deliver them to to more people. Um, but then also create something unique that's outside of you know our comfort zone and outside of what we do on a live live show basis so um tiktok and youtube huge emphasis this year um obviously we're getting kind of closer to the end of the year at this point which is wild to think about um but they are not more than streaming but at least equal to streaming very very important to me to to grow on on those platforms and you know like like we said earlier if, if i work hard on a video and it doesn't do as well as i'd hope it would or like there's not a big turnout like that really sucks and then, you know it's a hit that i have to take um but i wish it didn't matter to me but it, it matters like i don't <laughs> think it'll ever not matter you know yeah so well it should matter if you're trying to grow i mean at the same time mm -hmm. it's not you know you're not you are you're trying to run a business at this point right like you know, you're trying to create an environment not only for your community but you know just for yourself so that you can do what you love and you know that's that's the most important thing so um i actually wanted to ask you and i think you are but are you monetized on on, on youtube just recently um we so <laughs> yeah well it was it was kind of crazy like we so <laughs> i would say in the last I haven't really been posting and, and working on it as much as I, I should be. But like in the last several months, I think we've gone up about 3000 subscribers or so, which is pretty much where we're at. We're like, like three thirty four hundred. Um, and so we did get monetized somewhat recently. And I think that video that we talked about, the Kashi Complex one, my most viewed video, I, that was an eye opening moment when it came to like AdSense and revenue, like yeah. video content. I, I immediately was like, oh, I get it. Like, I understand now why people emphasize YouTube so much because as a creator trying to solidify my position, you know, I never want the burden to be on my viewers. I tell them all the time, like, take care of yourself before you take care of us. It's never been about the money and never will be like all of that is extra. Yeah. But from a business strategy standpoint, like obviously there has to be money coming in or else I'm going to go back to my day job. Right. Yeah. And so being able to shift that burden from my audience to ads and like partnership opportunities with businesses and, you know, brand deals and stuff yep. is huge. And so when I had that first video do relatively well, that was like right after getting accepted into the partner program and being able to monetize. And so seeing kind of the correlation of like, oh, wow, like that video made approximately like that much with just that amount of views. Like if I was regularly pumping out videos that were doing that well, that would relieve such a burden of stress of like, Hey guys, anyone have your Amazon prime? Sub? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So it's, yeah, yeah. that was definitely kind of a, an eye opening thing. And it's very recent. Like I said, probably just two months ago that it happened for us. So very lucky. That's, that's great. I mean, I, I still have yet to get monetized. I mean, I, I, um, well, I also was doing shorts for a while and, uh, they pretty much kicked me out of the shorts program. I made like a hundred bucks, but I would, they wasn't, I was never able to claim it. They, they like, they, I, I, th I think they did it on, on, on purpose. I, I never, my AdSense account never got approved. And then they were like, as soon as, as soon as the chance to get the hundred dollars was up, they were like, Oh, you're approved. I'm like, excellent. Thanks. Can I get my hundred dollars? Yeah. Like, no. And I'm like, okay, wow. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> uh, little grudge there. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've got, I made like probably $64 on TikTok uh, from, from that, the creator fund, which was like, what, like a one cent every thousand views or whatever at the time. Uh, you know, I, I've been trying to get more views on like the longer, the longer vi vi videos and stuff like that, but I'm really not focused on that. I'm focused on making a game and making games in general. So it's like, that's really gotcha. what it's going to be eventually. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the, uh, that's the long term goal, but what's your favorite game? <laughs> Man, that's a tough one. Um, of all time. It doesn't have to be like in the re recent ten, 10 years or whatever sure. of, of all time. I, it might surprise people. I don't know. I, it's like it's kind of a toss up. I'll give you two games because I can't I can't do maybe maybe three. I can't, you know, just give you one. But <laughs> um, 
Spyro Reignited Trilogy is like the greatest gift gamers have ever been given. Uh, if you haven't played it, you're missing out. I, if it wasn't a part of your childhood, you probably won't care as much. But like I have completed the original Spyro video game, like old and new combined, probably like 25 times, uh, 100%. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big Spyro fan, like Crash Bandicoot, too, but it's not the same. Um, so the Reignited Trilogy is up there for sure. Probably one of my favorites. I also have really fond memories of the Gears of War franchise, which is what I popularly would like tell people, like, that's my favorite game. Um, not just for the story. Like, it's one of the few games that I feel like I have been emotional from the storytelling from. But also, back in the first Gears of War, I have fond memories of, like, my dad sitting with me while I'd play, which we would we got to this level where there was a boss called a berserker and i was a kid like i didn't know what the heck i was doing and then he would sit down and he didn't really know what he was doing so like we kind of figured that out together and so because of that i'll always have the special memories of, of figuring yeah. that out so gears of war is definitely up there it's hard to not include halo like because of how much halo did for me growing up too um and like minecraft is kind of like honorary mention as well too i'm a big <laughs> minecrafts nerd and so I, I, again the list goes on and on when i say like i've played everything like i try to i ju generally play a lot of genres and get my hands on a lot yeah. um less less and less these days which is you know it's part of it but um yeah so spyro number one gears of wars up there too that's I, I i won't say anymore do you do you play horde gears horde i did um not not a lot though i when it first came out i checked it out you know solid solid that's, game that's my pastime at this point like i just i'll yeah. get on and play gears like if, if i have some free time I'll, I'll, I'll play horde it's my favorite thing so yeah that's that's interesting that you, that you said that but the thing i did want to say is gears maybe it's just me gears the first one gears of war that was more i feel like of like a horror game more than anything and then now it was pretty yeah yeah it pretty it's bad. like now it's like they have the fabricator they can like make weapons they're like just all about yeah. like you know marine type of crazy shit i i i think it's gone from like a horror game to like an action hero mo movie <laughs> is it just me sure. no i would i would agree with that i mean i you know playing through gears 5 would be my most recent story through but um yeah. you're you're definitely nail on the head there i i don't know if that's their attempt to kind of modernize or like you know it's hard five games deep you know they got to always push the envelope and so i feel like there's an element of of that too um but i just think the originals was 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 so gross and shocking and yeah. like you know the world that they built really pulled you into that and there's only so many times that you can go back into that world and still be scared by it so i think it's just kind of the nature of it to develop you know but um yeah that is an interesting way that they kind of adapted the the newest release for sure i enjoyed it i, I i'm still still big diehard gears fan so yeah i think they they did they made it that way because, like, you know, they, these things emerged from the ground and started killing everyone. And there was new, like, Juvies were new, the Berserker was new, the Scions were new. So I, so I think that's why they was it felt more like a horror game. And they're trying to make it feel like a horror game. It was just like, what are these things? Are these things alien? Yeah. Did we create them? Like, that's I think that's kind of the feeling. And now it's like we know where they came from now. Like, and I there's I don't know if you've been actually following most of it, but like it's you know. It, th now they have in the Gears Five, they have like Kate as being like the, like the new m m mother or whatever. It's it's very it's a very odd yeah. story now at this point. I've, I've kind of gotten lost in some of it, but um, yeah, I mean they definitely modernized it. I feel like that's actually a good point that you, that you made. Uh, why did you know actually? <laughs> if this is a sensitive topic. You can tell me. Uh, I was looking through your channel. I was looking through your channel on YouTube, and I saw um, that you had a podcast. And I was, I did, yeah. I was, I was very interested in. I was, I started watching some episodes, and then I realized it was only like twelve. And I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, were these recent? And I was like, what? Two, you know, two years ago, two years ago, one year ago, one year ago. I was yeah. like, okay. So why did you stop the podcast? I never should have, never should have stopped it. I think we had <laughs> something great, man. That was so that's my good buddy Ryan, one of my best friends, and. We got together under this idea to kind of create a gaming podcast. I don't know if it was I came to him with the idea. He came to me with the idea. But I loved what we did. I felt like, you know, so one of the things that set us apart, aside from already being a video podcast, which is an extra level of intricacy, um, doing it live. So, like, that was a live streamed production yeah, that I we would that. do with chat. Now, towards the end, we started thinking, hey, this is a live thing. Like, let's engage more with chat. And so we started to incorporate that towards the very end. I think when we got together for like our one last little episode thing, um, we we did some chat stuff. But 
yeah, I don't know. I mean, I was really proud of, of what we were able to accomplish. Um, the especially just like live production is not easy, you know, and I felt like for the most part and not to mention like we each had strengths and weaknesses. So when it came to a production standpoint, that was kind of my baby. And when it was like the news and like um, preparing for the production, like that was Ryan. But I don't think either of us at the time were very comfortable in front of like, you know, microphone trying to get the like, it's just different. Like me commentating on a game and being goofy on camera is very different than trying to do like a news informational yeah. thing. So there was a huge learning curve. We had, a, you know, bad technical difficulties on on some of the episodes. But um, I think if we had stuck with it, it would have been cool. I know that podcasts are, I mean, you could probably speak to this more than I can. But I imagine it's one of those things where, like, you got to get pretty deep into episodes and, and time with it for people to really start building a following and also to learn and adapt. And like you mentioned, like, we only did 10 episodes, like, in the first season. Um, so just, I mean, things got away from us, you know, Ryan had stuff, I had stuff, and I don't think either of us at the end of it for the quote unquote reward, right? Like the views we were gaining and people following along on the streams. Um, I don't think that we were like, okay, we can't, we're not going to do another season. Like we got to focus on some other stuff right now. Um, that being said, I also, as a creator, I, I don't think I'll ever be the news guy, you know, like right now I stay up to date with gaming news on DMZ because that's such a huge part of, you know, what we do right now on a yeah. daily basis. But it's, <laughs> this is going to sound so bad. It's so much work. Like I have it so is. much respect for the people that go around and they read the articles and they like prepare and like they're, they're writing scripts, you know, which a lot of people don't even see or think of in, in the background. Like it's, it's a ton of work. And so I think that's what we realized after doing our first season. We were like, this is, we're spending so much time on this and yeah. um, it's not worth it <laughs> at the yeah. moment. But I was really, I was really proud of what we were able to accomplish, honestly. So, yeah, that was actually going to be my follow-up thing is I, I made some notes here. Um, you guys, I mean, you guys were definitely prepped for hundreds of thousands of views. Like you guys, like I saw, I, I didn't watch the whole thing to be honest. It's it, an hour, an hour video is a long for, for me. I think I watched like yeah. maybe 20, 30, 30 minutes for each one. Um, you know, your podcast looked very professional and did it, did it really discourage you at, 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 at the time for the view count per, per video and during the live 100%. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's, <laughs> we we put a lot of ourselves into it and we were like we're going to do the first season no matter what. We're going to see how that goes and then we'll talk about like second season and how we can improve the format. Um and so we were hopeful for I guess a bigger reception in that first season for sure. Um but there's just no, you know, it's it's hard to dedicate so much of your time and energy into a project if again i hate the way that the world works in the sense that like money runs everything but if, if, if it's not pulling money in like we have to yeah. do something you know so exactly uh, it, if, if it had been more casual then though our production would have suffered and we were both really passionate like we don't want to make something that isn't up to the standard that we have for ourselves so it's, it's a hard balance there yeah yeah, it's it's and the the other thing too, which um I was gonna even suggest. I mean, if you ever want to go br bring it up again, uh, you you YouTube is actually starting to push po podcasts a little bit more now, um, but they're doing more of a not a live show. It's they there there's actually I was watching. I, have you ever seen Grant Gr Graham Stephan? Mm -mm. He's the, he's the finance YouTuber. Um, he he spoke to somebody at YouTube a while a, a while back when they were doing their pot podcast and. The, and the the guy from YouTube strictly said he was like, "Don't live stream it. Don't live stream your. Just take it, edit ed, ed, edit it down to an hour or whatever or less, and post it. It'll do better." And they've been doing it ever, ever since. And I, obviously, they have a, he has a bigger following or whatever else. But you know, they're pretty much saying don't live stream a podcast. They're saying just post it, put it in that new you know the new uh, there's a um what is it called uh, the play the playlist now that you could put it into a podcast you know kind of situation and then you can you, you you can kind of ship it off and then they'll they'll promote it but um that that, that was going to be my suggestion if you ever wanted to uh to just to, to pull it up again it's less work on, on you it's more of like you could just record it sure. you can ed edit it if you need to don't get me wrong ed editing is still difficult but yeah. you know you're you're not like having to get everything right on the live you know if you got some technical issues you can just you know you can just stop it or you can restart or whatever uh but live it's a lot harder that's also another reason why i have a lot of respect for people that do live you know including yourself it's just i remember when i first started doing lives so much work so much effort and at the end of the day i was like man 
Like I, I, I had the uh, the bitrate ish issue for the longest time, and my my game mm. was always laggy, and I didn't know why. And I I looked it up, looked it up, looked it up, and finally I found a video that was like, if you're streaming an FPS game, put like the bitrate like sixty thousand, and I was like, oh. And I tried that, and it worked perfectly. I was like, "Yes, finally!" And then you know, then I had some audio issues and whatever else. So yeah, um, but yeah, it's definitely tough to do a live stream versus a you know just like a normal vi- video. Yeah. What is your favorite weapon in Call of Duty history? Oh man, how do you not say the intervention from <laughs> OG Modern Warfare Two? It's just so iconic, you know. That being said, from that game also, the ACR was one of my favorite assault rifles. Um, I loved the akimbo models just because of people's reactions when you you know <laughs> hit them with the double shotties or the Remingtons. A lot of these are gonna come from Modern Warfare Two just because that's one of the games that is one of my favorites. Um, you know I, my actual this is controversial, not even that you asked for it, but my favorite Black Ops was Black or uh, Call of Duty was Black Ops Three, um, which was not received as well as some of the others. I mean, I know there's ones ranked lower by the COD community, but that was my first Call of Duty that I master prestiged in, got Dark Matter camo, like that had most hours in it by far. Um, but I, I couldn't tell you the weapons in that game though. I, you know, I, that was, <laughs> so I don't know. Um, yeah, it's gonna be hard for me not to go with intervention just because of like the 1v1 rust no scope matches that would take place and you know how iconic yeah. it is. But um, that being said too, like MP5, hard to hard to go wrong like you know throughout the throughout the series whatever iterations and names they'd give it but it's pretty pretty solid so yeah modern warfare 2 is the best call call of duty so i I, it's i mean it's i'm biased too probably just like the timing of it right it's like not even just the game but like the nostalgia of going back to that call of duty like it just none of the other cons have done what that one did for me like on a a personal on a spiritual level almost you know (laughs) it's like yeah but, um, it's funny that you see Black, Black Ops Three. I actually enjoyed Black Ops Three Zombies the most. That was my favorite mm-hmm. Zombies because they had the Apothecary ser- Servant. That was the one yeah. game where they ha- where the zombies had infinite health, but you could just suck them up into a void. And so, like, if you got it down to a T, it was easy to get to level one hundred in like two hours. And like, well, for like five hours, it was easy to get to level one hundred. So gotcha. easy. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I was like, I love that game the most uh, as far as zombies that i am uh, i almost got to a level of thousand prestige master i think i was like i think i'm like 800 and something i haven't played it in such a long yeah. time i i'm kind of a nerd in call of duty um i don't know if you've played it as much as i as, as i have me and my friends we, we were those kids way back when you know i was ranked under 100 like me and my friends were ranked under 100 in in, in, the, in, in the world for in Modern Warfare two um, my, my for three, we got there too. For zombies and Black Ops three, I, I was ranked under a thousand for everything, like kills, revives, you know, time, time sprinted stuff like that. It was it was crazy. Yeah. So, um, but now I'm probably ranked way way higher, and there's probably mods too that probably put me a lot a, a, a lot down. But after a certain point, like my for two. The, the modders were the only people ahead of us. So, like, we were actually pretty much, like, in the top 10. But, like, it was pretty much modders that were... That's that's right. why we, we were bumped, like, above 100. So, that it was really bad. I mean, I played probably 12 <laughs> to 14, maybe even tw- 20 hours a day just playing. We, we played all the time. So, we get back from school. We play. We play on the weekends. It was really bad. Now that I look back at it, I mean, I wasted so much time. <laughs> so right it's time. hard it's hard though you know it's like I, I told people like i've got easily over a thousand hours in this new cod you know yeah. and it's like now it's a little bit different because it's work so it's like comparable to think about like other people what they do yeah. but i did lose some sleep the other night thinking about like man that's like I, I didn't i didn't do the math but several days of my life that have just been focused on playing a video game, yeah. <laughs> you know it's but that's yeah. one of the questions i didn't have in here too but let's ask it now how many hours do you have in call of duty or actually you know what in gaming in general and do, do you think sure. like days days and hours weeks months years? at least i mean minimum a year of my life is gone into gaming <laughs> it's probably a lot more um i can at least think off the top of my head i know that um easily over a thousand hours in rocket league this new call of duty easily over a thousand hours um i think black ops 3 was close to ten thousand hours um so and then you mix in like everything else even just over the last eight years as a streamer like how long we've we've played for you know the multiple 24-hour stream events as well like it'd be impossible not impossible to calculate i'm sure or get a rough estimate but 
Yeah, minimum year of my life is you know, and I'm I'm 27, so that's you know that's that's a big chunk, big chunk of the life lifetime there. Yeah, that's so, uh, that's a long time, but yeah. I think I might have have you beat, especially in Call Call of Duty. My one for two, I had at least 90 days in. Yeah, it was three yeah, months at least. <laughs> yeah, most of them were like that too. So I'm pretty sure I have at least a year just in Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what? Oh, do you care? Uh, <laughs> this is probably a stupid question, but do you care more about streaming than YouTube right right now? So it's actually, I mean, it's a good time for the question. I don't know that I, that care is a weird word for it. I enjoy the most, the live interaction with people. It's what I've fell in love with eight years ago. It's, it's always the most important to me because whether it's Call of Duty, whether it's Gears of War, Minecraft, whatever I'm doing on stream, I'm there for the people. Like that's... You know, I fell in love with the idea that people all over the world could unite in something that they love, it, yeah. despite their differences, you know, upbringing, you know, political, whatever. Like, there's enough division in the world, you know, so I try to I strive to create that place where people can just come and be themselves and, and know they're in a safe space and, you know, full of like minded gamers and whatnot. And so it's it, you know, I, I love that aspect so much. Again, the business lens added on top to everything. I know how important YouTube and content creation is on, on top of that. And so there's that element, but there's also the capturing those live moments and kind of quote unquote immortalizing them as well. So that I can share those again in the future with other people. And um, so I would say I'm more motivated than ever to do content creation and videos. We'll still always love the live stream the most. It's, it's my favorite part. So. Yeah, it's alive in, in, in interaction that, that you crave. <laughs> it's just those moments, you know, you hit a crazy snipe that you had no business going for and people are like freaking out in the chat. Like you have to like you have to, you have to, you have to wait a second though, right? For for the chat to catch up like right. because there's a stream delay. Funny, so then you like no, look this... over, you're there it's just like <laughs> Yep, yep. Small small delay. Everyone it's funny you say yep. that. Every once in a while I'll do something, I'll look over and I'm waiting and I'm like, wait, why is no one? And then it comes. And it's yeah. like, ah, there we go. <laughs> but Yeah. Um Actually, I actually wanted to ask this too. I don't know if I have this written down, by, by, but I guess we'll find out since we're on the topic. Um, I saw yesterday, I think you had about 300 viewers in, in your stream. I don't remember if it was, if that, I don't know if that's peak. What's what's peak view, view, viewer count on, on, on uh, Twitch for you? Yeah, so these days, I mean, we're it's crazy to think about. I mean, months ago, nobody even knew who I was. So, um, but we're in a position right now. We're really good, uh, still growing, and I think right now we're averaging three hundred plus at our at our peak. But like peak views on any given days, anywhere between three fifty to four hundred. TikTok, it's its own thing. Um, I would mirror. You know, I, I I know our highest view count on a TikTok stream was eight hundred. Um, I think more often than less, we kind of sit at the average two to three hundred when we're playing and and peak maybe you know four four to five hundred, um, just because of the nature of TikTok. You know, people swipe by, stop in for a second, then then they're gone. So, yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. because that's what it is. It's just a addictive swipe game at this point. Is TikTok? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Wake up, TikTok. Go to the bathroom, TikTok. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Bad, but. <laughs> oh man. Um, you are streaming full, full time. I, I know you said that a few times now. Are you happy? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Happy. I mean, there's other things outside of content. Like I'm easily pouring 60 hours a week into content creation and like as a business. And when it comes to work experience, it's better than anything I've ever done. Like right now, lucky enough to say, like, I don't have to look for another work opportunity. Um, part of that is in to the fact, like my household, like we're bringing in enough, but, um, I, you know, this is what I've wanted for so long and it's, it's not that it's different than what I expected. I mean, you just could never have known, like we talked about this earlier, like you never know what it's like until you experience it. And I, I certainly hope that this is the beginning for always game time and that it, it continues to just explode. But, um, outside of the work stuff, there's stuff I'm working on, like personally, like I'm an open book, but like health is super important and I working on weight loss and just mental health and living a healthier lifestyle altogether. That's something I'm really struggling to do because actually before I had started full-time streaming again, I was in between jobs out of the workforce, just working on my health. I was losing weight. I was archiving that journey on a different TikTok channel and, and kind of, you know, going through that experience. The second the content started picking back up and I started devoting so much time and energy into it, health stuff started tanking again. So it's like coming into this balance point, if I was 
the next Tim the Tab Man. Like, you know, huge content creator, living my dream, like everything's going smooth, like as a as a content creator. But I was unhealthy, I still wouldn't be happy, right? Like yeah. in that circumstance. And that's something I'm increasingly aware of and, and placing a lot of importance on. Um, or likewise, you know, if if it came at the expense of my personal life or like my marriage or family and friends, like same situation there. So um it's it's a balance of trying to pour gasoline on the fire and and throw everything I have to capitalize, but also not you know to my own detriment. And so um, I'd say yeah, happier than I've I've ever been probably right now. I mean, twenty seven is a good year for me. Um, you know, very blessed and fortunate to be in the position that we're in and and to have the things that I have. Um, but still hungry, you know. Like yeah, I, yeah. I I want I want to do more, and I want to. There's still a lot of things I'm working on uh, behind the scenes too that I'm striving for. And it's so interesting that we live in a culture, at least, and I'll say just for me specifically, I don't, you know, want to generalize for, for people my age or, you know, anything about today's like climate, but it's interesting. I think a lot of people are unhappy because of the things they strive for. And that's something I'm trying to be so careful about in all of this, because and if in a month or two, the stream dies and I fade back into oblivion, like I still got to experience something that very few streamers ever do get to experience. And that's something I want to be grateful for. Like, I don't want to be, um, you know, hurt or sad about something in that, in that case, you know, obviously I don't want to lose the moment either. Um, but I do, I think that people hold um, themselves to a higher bar. It, it, I, I think it's important to work and, and try to be the best version of yourself. But I think that if you're somebody that is waking up on a daily basis and don't feel happy with yourself and like condemn yourself for not hitting these goals that you set. Like that's a trap. And I, it's something that I've fallen into. And I think a lot of people fall into. And so just reminding myself like one day at a time, baby steps, yeah. like I'm here, I'm lucky to be here. Let's enjoy it. And let's, let's work. But you know, I don't, I don't want to be too hard on myself either just because that could be, that can be really rough. So. Yeah. It's funny. There's a lot, there's a lot to unpack there, but yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I found myself in a similar situation, uh, even recently, especially financially, you know, like I'm investing, I'm doing all, all this, all, all these different things. So it's, it's, um, it's definitely a journey and you have to, yeah, you do have to remind yourself, like take, you know, take a day, take, you know, just relax, know that you are getting towards your goal. It may not happen tomorrow, but it's going to happen. Right. Uh, especially yeah. if you keep going towards like, it won't just fall on your lap. That's definitely no, number one. It, nothing that's worthwhile will ever fall into your lap. You're going to have to work for it. And um, that's something that I either, I, I have to tell myself even now uh, you're 27. You, you said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm 30. So I've got a little bit, I've got a couple of years on you, but you know, 28, 29 was probably the time where I started actually trying to take control of my life. Um, I've been doing content creation for, for a while and it's, yeah, lot big big journey. So I so so I hope that you know. Well, you are happy, so you know. I, I'm I'm hoping that you know the rest of the time here. I hope you don't fade into oblivion. I, I hope that's <laughs> all. You know, it, it's it, it's all good stuff from here. But um, I was actually going to ask you that too, because uh, your 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 picture on Discord is like uh. You know, it, 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 is it just a character or is that something where like, you no, were... it's, it's like AI generated, oh, okay. like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. one of those, one of those apps you pay like five bucks to and get like, you know, and I, yeah, I thought it looked cool. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was like what you used to look like or something along those lines. And you like no. lost all the weight and now you're like a unrecognizable <laughs> if you saw me. Cause I mean, in high school I was, I, I used to be like super athlete. I still you know, I'd like to think I'd hold my own in some regards athletically, but like I'm in the worst shape of my life right now from a conditioning standpoint <laughs> and going outside and like seeing yeah. the sun. Um, <laughs> so, but no, and I mean, unrecognizable high school, super, I did football wrestling, you know, um, Frisbee, like, and, and disc golf on the side with friends and family. And like, you know, it, it devolved over the years. There's a lot there to it as well too, but um so yeah i'm just I, I i'm getting older you know 27 i I'm, I'm certainly young certainly grateful i get i get a lot of flack from chat when i start complaining about my age um <laughs> but i know like this is kind of a make or break like i get to decide at this point like how do i want to live and sure eating fast food and being lazy and like like that stuff is nice but i want to be around for like my family i want to be able to do um, everyday stuff without the complications of being, you know, overweight and, and all this other stuff. So 
Yeah, I'm I'm excited to uh to, to be picking that back up and, and re-emphasizing it because it is important. I think everybody should work towards their health, you know, regardless of yeah. you know, for me it's not like a cosmetic thing. Like I'm already married and like you know, <laughs> I but you know, it was like I could I could certainly not really care about what people think, you know, I look like on the internet, but just for my own self and taking care of myself kind of thing, you know, it's important. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the one thing I was gonna say, especially if you're not actually exercising, we all make time for what we want to make time for. So yep. I even yep. have to tell myself this. This is something where I'm like, do some push ups, maybe run in place for a little bit. I have these uh I have these I have these things, you know, for grip exercises. You know, if you if it's that, you know, start with that. Like start small. As right. we just said, you know, start small. So, you know, if you're it's it's something that Arnold Schwarzenegger used to say too. It's like you make time for what you want to make time for. So and, the, and it's like even if it's five minutes, ten minutes out throughout the day, do some push ups, run in place, do some curls with some yeah. with some you know with some weights or whatever. It's it's that's where it all starts. So and I'm starting to get back into that my, myself. So it's nice to hear. It's always nice to hear somebody else doing the same things as you, yeah. so you're not just insane in your own brain doing for sure. You know, it's so, <laughs> spinning well, your wheels. I, I, people isolate so much, you know, and it's, that's one of the reasons I'm an open book. Like I, as, as I've gotten older, I value authenticity and vulnerability above everything else when it comes to, you know, reacting or like interacting with other people just because, you know, I, you see, you see the opposite side of that. Some, in some regards on internet stuff too, like people who kind of get addicted to social media or like look up to influencers are seeing like the highlights. And so then they feel bad about like their life or where they're at. And that's like, you know, I, I try to just be as real with people as I can because, you know, if nothing else, maybe that makes it easier on them to open up and and, and see, like, you're not the only person. Like, you know, I, I went through that pretty rough. 2019 was a, was a tough year for me in my life. And I remember thinking to myself, like, not having a lot of people to turn to and resources. And oh. it, it, it just makes things harder when you don't feel like you can, you know, be vulnerable with others and reach out for, for help when you need it. So it's just, you know there are more important things than your appearance and, yeah. and on the, on the outside of like, Oh, I have to pretend like I've got things cl- like cl- cool, calm and collected. It's like, no, yeah. it's, you know, yep. But the buddy system. <laughs> yeah. Account- accountability too. Huge. Yep. Um, what, oh, sorry, is converting TikTok. This is, we kind of talked about this, but I want to ask you a little bit more, maybe, maybe go a little bit more in depth in it. Um, is converting TikTok viewers to Twitch your best strategy right now? Is that the most um, strategy that's working, really? Sure. I would say it's largely responsible for driving traffic to the Twitch streams, um, 100%. Do I think it's, you know... We're in an interesting place of growth. Like, we get some authentic growth from Twitch because of the size we're at currently. Kind of talking back to that, like, hierarchy, you know, and discoverability that's built in on the platform yeah. or lack thereof. Um, but, yeah, TikTok is largely responsible for for pulling in views right now very i mean super thankful for that you know it's it's its own little community but um there's there's different ways i try to um encourage people to come to the twitch stream because tiktok is discoverability twitch is monetization youtube is the bane of my existence and um (laughs) twitter and all those other ones i i'm just not as active so my my long goal is to utilize tiktok as the funnel that it is pull people into the live show um, and then grow on our various other socials, but ultimately also land them in our discord server, just because, um, that's where I can interact with people offline and, and real time messages, large announcements for the community. Like that's my, if I can get people to stick around there and to have that be active and healthy, that's, that's, that's big for us moving forward. I think. Yeah, that's, that's good. I mean, I tried the discord thing. I wasn't, I wasn't very successful. <laughs> so I'm glad it's hard. I, it's hard. It I mean, I've, it's, I think we're at, we're just under two thousand members in Discord, which is crazy to think about. Because I think when we had started full time in November twenty twenty two, we were at like forty. But even when you, it's just like when you have a ton of followers on a platform, but you have like less viewers actually in the stream. Numbers are numbers, you know. I'm not going to devalue like the accomplishment, but it's it's way more important in the moment, like how active the community you have is versus amassing, you know, all these people. And so that's you know that's what I try to do with Discord is just keep people talking and happy and interacting and yeah. and keep it that place where they can feel safe to do so yeah yeah it's uh that's great that's an amazing stra- strategy i i've uh i i almost envy that strategy because <laughs> i i've tried it in the past it just hasn't it hasn't worked out but i also um i made a couple of discord ser- servers one for my other fi- like finance channel i made one for uh 
just straight up like YouTubers that were um, trying to kind of bounce off each other, like bounce ideas off each other and get be- better at doing that. And it actually got to the point where I got so good that nobody was talking anymore because everybody was just succeeding. So, I mean, I, I guess that, that was a good, <laughs> I'm not trying to brag, but that products. was pretty much what no, it yeah. was. There's a couple of them in there. Like right now, Matt magnates media is like one of the best ones in, in, in there. He, he has a million followers right now. Like he just hit a million, million followers not too long ago. He, I haven't talked to him in, in months um, you know, and it's, it was insane to think about at, at the time, you know, but he was, he was, he was on his own journey. There was a couple of other ones Ch- chasing the apex, just to shout out a couple. Uh, there was one that actually stopped, which he was really good. Die, Die man was another one. Uh, he, you know, they were, they, they were very good at what they did. He was very good at what he, at what he did. He always had, had to be dying, but, but I guess maybe life got, got in the way. He was also a programmer too. So he probably got. He probably got busy. He was like an engineer, a super smart guy, very good at YouTube. And uh, it's always sad to see people like 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 that though. You know, they they they're really good at something and then they just can't do it anymore and they and they stop and you're like, "Oh, he has so so much talent, so wasted." Have have you yeah. ever met have you ever met anyone like that? Um, even even even, even if it's just on on YouTube. I've met people not not so much on that perspective, but I've met people that I've known like if they put the effort in would do well, and they just have not had either the motivation, opportunity, resources, you know, whatever it may be. But there's been people in my life and and even personal friends that I'm like, you are too funny to not be doing this. Like people yeah. would love this, but you know, it's it's not for everybody either. Um, so it's it's like tough. You know, I, I try to encourage them, but at the same time. You know what am I gonna what am I gonna do? Yeah. Are you? Cr- oh, actually, you kind of you kind of talked. We kind of talked about this. You're not using AI to create any, any of your kit, your clips, right? There's no one creating clips for you. You're just doing it all, all, all on your own. Not currently. Yeah. I, like I said, my moderator Artemis is is pretty incredible. They've they've offered some you know video stuff in on big days where it's like. Uh, something I've learned a lot in, in this first year is like timely content is a big factor on how well videos can or can't do. Yeah. Um, and it's not something I'm good at. It's also why I don't like the gaming new stuff because I'm just, I, I'm not, not good at it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for the, for the, for the most part, largely it's, it's making, you know, notes. I have, I have a physical notebook. I write stuff down on stream all the time or like also uh, stream markers and then actually going back to it and making the clip is the, <coughs> is the harder battle for sure. Yeah. It, um oh yeah we actually did i did write this question down your your peak your peak <laughs> viewer count on uh twitch uh but that that was around 300 to 4 to 400 you, you said yep this is a deep question and i and i <laughs> i want you to think about this before before you answer it if you got all of the money back for the money that you spent on games consoles micro transactions you know computers what whatever how much money would you have yeah um <laughs> no, there's a lot to count um it's interesting um it's probably less game pass is what i'm thinking of immediately for xbox and how much that saved me on games um and then even before that there was like the the service i forget even the name of it but like you'd rent a game and then you'd mail it back mm. i don't know if that's trying to, but uh so anyway i invested in, in tons and tons of games and and cosmetics alone in this new call of duty i keep joking with chad about tax write-offs because i've been getting a lot of the bundles but then also in a game like rocket league i think i spent like close to 500 dollars on the whole case opening and trading game in that game so um and then personal setup for streaming and gaming i mean i think it's probably safe to say somewhere in the ballpark of like 25 30 dollars you know wow. yeah, yeah yeah i mean it's, it has to right like those 60 dollars titles add up you know yep. and those are what games you play once maybe twice <laughs> and then you know you talk about the gaming consoles that i have the computer like the stuff for the stream so yeah i don't know this is my initial gut reaction it could be way off it could be way more way less but That'd be yeah. my safe. Like if, if somebody, you know, if I had to give an answer, probably somewhere around there. How 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 does that make you feel? I don't regret it. Uh, people, I mean, <laughs> people have hobbies. You know, people 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 buy clothes. People buy shoes. Like you know, I'm a very I'm not a very materialist. Well, I mean, games, I guess, but I'm not a very uh, materialistic person. Like, I, at least I'd like to think so. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that either. Like, people spend your money on whatever you want to spend on. Um, you know, I, I feel fortunate to be where we're at to where now gaming and, and what I love doing is helping me to 
survive and, and make money as well. So that, that definitely changes my perspective on it. But, you know, it's like I, I think I'd be more disturbed by if I tabulated like how often gas station visits on snacks added up and how much money I've spent on like a soda and like a hostess cake or something, you know, and like yeah. you add that up over the years like that number. I'd probably be like, man, if I just drink more water, I could have saved, <laughs> you know, or like a Starbucks coffee. I'm not a coffee guy, but like. My wife pretty religiously, you know, drinks coffee. And so to oh, think about like too. those. Expenses, <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's, I mean, it, I don't think it, it's neither here nor there. I, I don't really think about it much. Um, I try to be smart with, with expenses, but you can't take it with you. And yeah, I think the biggest thing is, is trying to find a balance, especially the age I'm in where you're planning for the future, but also not to your own detriment. Like, yeah. you know, my wife and I are very, very lucky like we have what we need to cover our lifestyle and that's great. And we're, you know, able to save and, and do trips and things like that. And so, um, yeah, overall, I guess grateful is, is how I feel looking back on that and, and seeing how big that number probably is. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I'm glad that my wife, that my wife isn't the only one, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially with the Starbucks. She got me addicted to it for a minute, you know, cause I, I didn't realize that cat, that there was caffeine in like a lot of those drinks. Uh, mm -hmm. And not like coffee, like caffeine. Like there's the refreshers. Do you know refreshers? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's I didn't know there was caffeine in there. And then she one yeah, day she's like, "There's caffeine either. in there," and I'm just like, "What?" I'm like, "Is that is, is that why I'm wired the entire day?" No I, wonder I'm addicted, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, and I'm just yeah. like, "There's caffeine in there." You never told me that. She's like, "I thought you do." And I'm like, "Why would I know that? I don't go to Starbucks." <laughs> yeah. So, um, what is your most controversial video that that that, that you've ever posted? Oh man, um, on TikTok it feels like every video is controversial for no yeah, reason. Yeah, especially um, from the comment section. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think from I, you know, I try to keep things like I said, positivity and inclusivity are staples that always Game Time is built on. So when it comes to everybody knows for the most part when it comes to streaming and the divisive topics on the world are usually kind of a no go for live chatter, um, just because you know. People are, it's not what we're there for, really, kind of to do. We're not there to like settle a debate or anything. Like, we're there to, for, you know, largely to have fun and, and to, to spend time with one another. So, yeah. um, I don't also have a lot of strong feelings in some of those areas. Like, for politics, for example, obviously, I'm very attuned to like what's going on in the world and what, you know, things that I deem are important and impact my daily life. But I'm not a very political person. So, it's you know that that lends itself to helping too because you know if you were somebody that was like super strongly you know advocating for your either beliefs or your like politics like you know then that is gonna work its way into your content probably more naturally but this not, I mean I'm I'm a guy that plays video games like really honestly like I'm just a guy so I tell that's my favorite thing to tell chat all the time you know <laughs> anytime I get a compliment it's like listen thank you guys but you have no idea like I'm so anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, controversial video. I, there's probably something we said maybe back in our podcast series. Maybe um, that was uh, someone could scrub through and find something to be either you know disagree with or find as like a hot take in gaming. You know, even if it's lighthearted, like to be like, oh wow, I can't believe Ben said this about X title. Um, but off the top of my head, nothing really comes to mind. Did did you weigh in on the uh, M and K versus controller argument? Oh, uh, yeah. So, so um, people, I mean, it's a natural. It comes up all the time in, in Call of Duty. You know, that's the game we play. But I play mouse and keyboard. And what I tell people is that I feel like my performance and technical ability is so much better than when I was a controller player. I was a controller player all my life until 2019 when Warzone came out. And I was lucky enough to swap to PC and I started figuring out FPS games on keyboard or mouse. There are things I can do that I don't think were possible, no matter how much time I sunk into controller play that I can do now on on mouse and keyboard just from a technical standpoint. And I think like the general debate I hear a lot is like mouse and key wins at distance and controller wins up close because of like aim assist. Um, <clears throat> since making the swap, anytime I try to play on controller now, I am awful. Like I have <laughs> no idea what's going on. And I, I did it recently as like a challenge and I could kind of feel the effects of like, you know, up close with the Vaznev and Warzone 2, feeling that little bit of lock on you get from the aim assist on controller at uh, up close distances. And I was like, I just wasn't as impressed by it. You know, like for me personally, again, just going off my own performance, if I got good at controller, I don't feel like that advantage would be enough to pull me away from the things I like about mouse and key. Um, and then I tell people all the time that I feel like, a good controller player or uh, I feel like 
an average keyboard and mouse player could be as good as a good controller player, I feel like, but the pro scene completely goes against that, you know? So just from my own bias and perspective, that's how things seems, but everybody in the pros uses controller, right? That's like the, the, it's no secret. Like this game, you know, was made around that. And like, you know, they think it's like the most competitive, whatever. So, um, when I had that revelation, I realized I don't really have a dog in the fight. I don't care what people play on. Like, I think I'm above average and I use mouse and key and I like it. So, you know? Yeah. I mean the other, the, the, do you think people just need like something to blame, especially uh, mouse? Oh my gosh! Players? Yeah, because not <laughs> even just that, just the rampant cheater accusations. Here's the thing: I've made a deal with my community. I think that the number of cheaters in the game and how bad of a problem cheating is in games like Call of Duty is more prevalent than I give credit for. So I think it happens a lot less than people claim, but I think it's a lot less than people that actually accuse people of cheating. Um, I think there is a lot of people in the COD community who will kind of almost default to that when they die now. Like, oh man, look at this guy's aim. It's way too good. Like whatever. And my, my like me myself, I very rarely make like a accusation or like cheating calls when it happens to us in game. I think over my thousand hours in this, in this title, I've maybe run into four legitimate, like, everyone's yeah. in agreement this is a cheater yeah um so that's my perspective you know i think it's an issue man people people just can't take the l gracefully and that speaks a lot into a large larger conversation about like mental health and people that do competitive games who really probably can't process that the right way yep. um but yeah so no i think i don't think the original question was about cheating but yes needing something to blame Cheating is definitely a crutch for a lot of people, man. They die, and that's like their first thing. And as a streamer, it sucks because there are actually content creators and streamers out there who will cheat. I don't think there's that many, but there are. It does exist. It's not something that I'm, you know, I'm aware of that. I think it's disgusting. Like, I would never want to build up a following off of anything that wasn't true, right? And so yeah. cheating, obviously, for that benefit. But um, <coughs> as a streamer now, when I get called a cheater in game, I'm like, what? Like, what yeah. are you like? If I was You're cheating, like, I would be thank so you, much. Well, it is a compliment, <laughs> but like, I would be so much better if I was cheating at this yeah. video game. Like, you don't understand. And then you get into the whole, like, I don't like it's got to be so boring being a cheater at a video game like this. Like, what do you do? Just go around killing people all the time. And then, like, so anyway, long story short, yes, people do look for reasons to blame more quickly than themselves just not being great in, in that moment but that's something i'm so happy about and pride myself on in my content whenever i die i don't get mad if i do it's at my performance you know it's like i start immediately thinking about like what could i have done differently or is this just an unlucky situation because especially in call of duty like the time to kill is so much faster than some other tactical shooter games like if somebody sees you first and has like a shotgun in a corner, you're going to die. And that's not a skill thing in that moment. Right. So being able to differentiate like, Oh, my game sense, I should have checked that corner or I should have played that differently. Yeah. It's invaluable. But yeah, no, a lot of people are just like, Oh, he's cheating. Go back. Yeah. Backtracking to what you were saying before too. two points, which I've had people made. I've had people made the point of this. So you said that, you know, the majority of the pro the pro scene is going to be controller, right? And I've heard people say the top 10 whatever on the leaderboards for for pros are all controller players. And you know, this is this is the this this is the aim assist argument. Um, and you can tell me if you agree or disagree. But I find it funny that people say that cuz my counter argument to that is okay, the dude that's ranked number 1 through 10 on the leaderboards for for a pro league is on controller. The guy that practices <clears throat> 8 to 12 to 13 hours a day on controller is not the problem. It's the aim assist, right? It's like that's the reason why he's so good. It's not the it's not the fact that he he practices the majority mm, of I his week saying, yeah. playing games. Um that's that is the argument that I make against that. It's like it's it can't. It's not. Yeah, the aim assist is not the overpowered thing. It's the person that's doing it is that's right. using it is the overpowered thing. What, I'm just look at me. Any one person in the gaming community, I can pick anybody from my chat and hand them a controller, and we could watch them perform and be like nowhere near as good as a yeah. pro. So I mean, it just it just goes to advocate and show like these people are insane because of their natural ability that's been developed over hours and hours and hours of repetition and and being good like you know some people are just more naturally gifted in in gaming and stuff i'd fully believe that but 
yeah, you can't take away from, you know, the dedication these people have spent grinding multiple titles and, and developing their skill set for that, for sure. I mean, because I have aim assist when I use a controller, I'm awful. So <laughs> I, know, I know it's not enough to carry me into being, you know. Yeah. Now, the question, I guess, is like if you took two new players and put them on like a mouse and keyboard and one on a controller and then kind of reviewed that. But even even still, I just you can make arguments both sides. I just yeah. uh, just play the game like if you, yeah. and, and there's, a, there's a bigger issue too uh, not to completely derail but like people who don't enjoy the game but play it and it, it, it could be a game addiction lens it can be like a an outlet for them you know if they had a tough work week and this is how they de-stress whatever the reasoning is but i tell people all the time like if you find yourself getting mad at playing a game and you're turning to like blaming people for cheats or aim assist or finding yourself like like, I don't think you enjoy the game, dog. Like, yeah. <laughs> and that's okay, but that's a conversation like you need to have with yourself because I'm over here driving around, blasting music and prox chat and, yeah. you know, vibing out, and you're in here like screaming about X, Y, and Z of why this guy killed you. It's like, it's tough. I, I can't imagine being in that place, you know? Yep. The, o- the other thing, too, that, that, that I wanted to mention and bring up and get your opinion on uh, is essentially the same argument, but if the top 10 players or maybe the top 20 or whatever are majority controller, then wouldn't that skill ceiling be the same, right? So you're not really going to be put up against a mouse and keyboard player. If you're a, if, if you're a controller player, maybe like, let's say the argument, if there's 20 people in a room all competing, right? Let's say three of those are mouse and keyboard and the rest are controller. So the majority of the room is going to be a controller player. So in reality, you're really not there's really no comparison there you're all at the same skill level at the same ceiling like you're still all you the majority of the room is using controller so how can you make the argument that aim assist is overpowered now the majority of the room let's say you know 16 or 17 people have aim assist it's like yes the master keyboard players let's see how they perform in this but 90 percent of the time in in a pro setting the master keyboard player usually wins at least that's what i've seen um, mm. so it's, it's just something to kind of keep, keep in mind. I'm not trying to harp on it. I'm just trying to like get your perspective on it. Uh, if, sure. if that, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. I, I think for me, you know, I'd be interested to take a look at like statistics and data spe- specifically and understanding too, like the pro scene is very different from like the other majority of the COD community yep. who play the game either casually or competitively, but aren't at that level. Um, for me, I just feel like nine times out of 10 when I die, Okay, maybe eight times out of ten, it's a game sense or a decision mistake. It's like because of because of the time to kill. You know, I've played other games where there's a longer time to kill. Like Apex Legends, for example, is a, is such a high skill game. Like earning kills in that game requires so much of a player yep. compared to a Call of Duty title where largely some guys running in an open field and I just happen to be there with a gun, right? Like. I can afford to miss shots in that case and still come away with the, the win there. And I feel like Apex is a whole other beast. But um, I feel like when I die, it's largely related to something that I could have done differently versus me missing shots. And that's why the whole aim assist whatever debate is something I largely don't pay a lot of mind to or like, you know, feel strongly about because um, I recognize that in my game. You know, I don't know about other people, but like if I'm... I don't feel like I missed a lot of shots. I feel like I didn't see this guy and he killed me or I pushed into a team of two because one was, you know, on stealth vest or ghost, right? Like they weren't on the mini map and I didn't know that. So I played more aggressively when I should have held back and he- like held high ground. And so I just feel like I run into those instances so much more than like, oh, this guy hit more shots on me because he has aim assist. Like, I don't think I've ever <laughs> once felt that way in a firefight. Yeah. Like, yeah. Maybe, or, oh, man, I missed so many shots. Well, yeah, the reason I didn't win the fight is because I missed a lot. Like, maybe my gun build sucks, or maybe my aim's off today. Uh, yeah, I don't think yeah. I've ever once thought about the whole aim assist thing outside of that, so. Yeah. Do, do you think skill-based hit reg is real? Um, elaborate. <laughs> what what, what so, does that mean? Uh, you've, you probably don't know the news. Uh, for a while, this is, uh, this, is, this is a brief moment in TikTok history, but uh, for the longest time, about a month, maybe two months, I saw a lot of videos on hit reg in Call of Duty. So uh, Mm skill-based hit reg essentially is, you know, you're doing really well. It's kind of like, it's it's sort of like um, skill-based matchmaking where um, you essentially are shooting somebody one one game and you're hitting all your shots and you're just dominating. And then the next game, maybe the next five games or so, you're like hitting them directly and it's just not, killing them or not hitting them as hard Mm. anymore 
It's like um, the trend where people say, like, I'm not playing the same game. Like, that kind of thinking. Y- k- kind of, yeah. Sure. Yeah. I see. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't think from a standpoint, from a developing standpoint, they could tailor a game that way. Or I don't think they should. I mean, I don't know technically what's feasible, but I just don't understand, like, how that would be considered fair to a player base. I think there's other ways that they would probably try to balance things like skill based matchmaking, for example, before doing any kind of like because that's just completely unrewarding to a player. Right. It, to to have either less damage or shots not count in an attempt to balance me out with the rest of the lobby. Like, I don't know. It just kind of sounds preposterous when I think about it. But this is also my first time hearing about it. So I haven't really had time to think, you know, have, or, have you ever had a moment where you're just like. Why oh, did that guy not die? I shot him so yes. many times. <laughs> yeah, I've I've experienced that. Um, I've that's always kind of chalked it up to. Is. I see. I've always just kind of chalked that up to either like lag, ping, latency. I know specifically within DMZ, there's a train that if you do combat on, legitimately half your shots will not register. Mm. Um, it's been a glitch in the game for a, a, a long time, where like you'll go to try to finish somebody who's like self reviving, and you'll be on them barrel in their chest like shooting and like every other or like one in every three bullets is getting you like the the, the register so it's yeah you know i but i've run into that before where it's like i am actually confused how i didn't win that fight when i started shooting first i wasn't missing shots he broke my plates first with a gun that is worse and yeah. it's like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i'm lucky GG's, you've experienced it at least that's what the community will yeah. say <laughs> yeah <laughs> What do you like the most about DMZ? Oh, man. Um, so I, I will say I think the extraction shooter model is becoming largely popular uh, when compared to BR stuff just because it's more interesting. I think people love BR because initially every deployment felt different, right? Your loot was variable. Where you were going to drop was variable. You know, the skill level of the players you're meeting is, is different. And like, you know, so everything felt kind of fresh um, where I think that mode tends to suffer and where I think there's been a big shift is when you die, you're out. And that's why I think like Resurgence and when Fortnite introduced like the reboot van, um, you saw like more people kind of flock to that because all this work, you know, sometimes you'll be playing a looting simulator for 10 minutes and you'll run into the first guy you see and they'll kill you. And it's like, that's not a very, at least in my experience, not a very enjoyable uh, yeah. gaming experience. Extraction shooters change the game in that it's no longer about killing everyone and being the last one alive. There are multiple ways typically for you to be successful in the game. And so um, on one deployment in DMZ, I might die, but if I completed a tough mission, I'm over the moon. And that's not really something that I feel like you have a lot in Warzone, it's counterpart. Um, So I think for me, DMZ is so special because of the mission based uh, grinding and admittedly my my lens and my perspective, I am a sucker for missions and progression, Um, even with like camos and multiplayer like that's why I play multiplayer is to level up weapons and, and get camouflages and things like that. It's not because I love multiplayer. I love that feeling of progressing through and completing and checking things off the list. And so DMZ holds a special place in my heart for that specifically because if it was just go in, try to get loot for an operator, maybe kill some players and get out alive, I still think the mode would be really fun, but it would be a lot less impactful and a lot less enjoyable for longer without the, I have a mission to do. And mm. um, so I think that every run being different is really, really accentuated in the format for DMZ. Um, and I also love that I can, you know, winning quote unquote is X filling or mission completion. It's not... I don't have to wipe the lobby. I don't have to be the last one alive. I don't have to, you know, I, I think you can win in a lot more ways in DMC than in Canon Warzone. And that's why it keeps, it keeps me coming back because I think that up to this point, they've done a relatively good job of updating the game mode and, and keeping it fresh. And that's probably, you know, debatable um, amongst the DMC community. But I do think that it has been surprisingly good, especially coming from, you know, Activision, Call of Duty. Um, but yeah, definitely missions. I'm a mission guy. I love the threat of PvP, and I play mostly solo, so I know that my lens is different from, you know, the game modes developed around trios, and they've openly said, like, that's our entry point, that's what we're focusing on. So it's an added level of challenge, but it's one that I enjoy um, a lot to, to kind of push myself and see what's possible. Yeah. What do you hate the most about D- DMZ? Oh! 
Um, packet burst, <laughs> which is like a <laughs> lag. Uh, and, you know, if it was a seamless playing experience right now, I wouldn't have very many qualms, honestly. I think that there is a couple big major items in DMZ that everyone would agree with. Like, assimilation is in a really weird spot. Um, six man groups is, you know, something people love to complain about. Um, again, I think it's people that are looking for an opportunity to kind of pass the blame because as a solo, I've navigated six man, they're called platoons. Um, several times, you know, either by direct combat, like wiping a platoon, which is less often, like I'm not here to just boast about in-game skill or anything, but also being able to utilize, you know, vehicles and game sense and map awareness to get away from those platoons in instances where I really need to live or get out with a, a mission item, for example. So, um, you know, I think the community would probably talk about, you know, assimilation is, is a hot topic item. Um, but really, I mean, honestly, with, with my stance one of the only things i also don't love to see is like toxicity in game um you know always game time was built upon positivity and inclusivity and so we are trying to be the leading charge against um, toxicity in gaming and so a lot of people will misconstrue that for dmz and say that killing players is toxic and that's something i completely disagree with i think that without the pvp element the game mode would be boring and you know people that go around and just hunt in the dmz i'm certainly not going to tell people how they can enjoy a game like if anything, that's going to be on the developer's job to kind of balance that interaction and experience for their player base. Um, but people that will like hunt you down and then talk trash in typical Call of Duty fashion is something that just ruins the fun for everybody. And it's something I strongly fight against, but I can't fault DMZ for that. Like that's an internet gaming yeah. thing. So um, I would say probably just the assimilation. It's in a weird spot. It's, you know, people people aren't enjoying it, and that makes it not fun for me because then I have to hear about it while I play the game a lot, which is, <laughs> you know. Um, but I, I think, man, I think they got something special. I don't know that they know they knew what they had when they when they launched, and you know, obviously it's in beta, and they're they're reworking it each season to work a little bit different and look a little bit different. But I say all the time, I think every update for DMZ makes it a better game. So yeah, I don't the, want to complain about on my end. <laughs> yeah, I mean the. The first video I saw of you was you're you're dishing out just justice to uh to to those dudes that that screwed you over. Oh um, uh, yeah, yep. the team. I forgot exactly what it was, but I know like you went to go take off in the helicopter, and then they they started shooting at you, and you're like, "All right, let's let's oh. uh let's teach these guys a lesson." And then the one guy's like, "No, no, please, my friend's a jerk." <laughs> you're just <laughs> like, "No, you had yep. your chance. You associate with jerks, you get you're gonna get it too." Yep. <laughs> So, um, yeah, you know, it's actually funny. You, uh, you, you, you kind of said that, that taking out the PVP element would be, um, would kind of make the game boring. I, I actually advocated for less PVP, if not taking it out eventually, uh, or at least doing two different game modes, right? So you do for one sure. game mode where you have, uh, the, you know, the bots and you and maybe a team or whatever, or maybe you have like, kind of like zombies where you have like a team of like, let's say 10 or something like that. And you guys have to go through the DMZ. Like a, you have a full map to, to yourself and you kind of do whatever you need to do contracts, challenges, killing bosses and whatever else. Uh, but having the PVP element, I feel like I, I feel like call of duty. This is something that I, I'll, I will share with you and you and let's see what you say. I feel like call of duty needs a game mode. That's not, pvp or, or oriented D dmz is that i feel like but i still think it needs just a tad sprinkle of it and not like what it has so like more of maybe warning you if there's operators with like a big thing or being able to tell the difference between an operator and like a bot because sometimes i can't tell because sometimes people run the same skins as the bots <laughs> so it's tough to tell um what do you think about maybe having less pvp action or maybe even having um maybe more of like a team up PVP action where, you know, Hey, we want, we all want to get into this bunker. Let's, let's team up real, real quick and get this done. And so we can't actually shoot each other at the end and screw each other over. You know, we can all join the same six man squad or 10 man squad or whatever. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I think there's an element of what you're describing that does go on. And there certainly was a subset of the community that was revealed with the launch of DMC where there is a demand for, its own playlist. I see it all the time. People say that they wish that it was just bots and they could go in and do missions. And then, you know, the the, the flip side of that where people, um, you know, kind of say and echo the the whole without PvP, it would get boring. I think that they could do a mode and, and make it really interesting and fun to play where it was the same format, no PvP, 
Um, but it would require restructuring, right? Like you're going to yeah. need more difficulty in some AI. You're going to need like more boss objectives. You're going to need something that's going to keep players invested into you going through. And maybe that's, you know, random loot blueprints, kind of how like when you would do like a destiny raid or something, there's a chance to get something every time from that. Um, I know for them, the big concern, well, uh, certainly from an outside perspective and what I've seen on, you know, Twitter and in and, and streams, I think for them, the concern is to split their player base, which is another reason that they don't have um, like a solo playlist, for example. Um, and I actually do think that that is something that is kind of a nightmare for me as a playing experience is all the different rotating playlists for Warzone. Um, but I, I, I'm sure that that's something that's difficult for them to manage. I think their concern is if we have a PVE only DMZ playlist and a PVP playlist and like this mishmash, um, it maybe gets a little bit confusing to the player base, like, you know, what's what, and also splitting that up, I think is something that they're worried about for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would, I wouldn't disagree. I know there's definitely demands and a market for, a game mode that would be basically DMZ, but just bots. And you could go in and, and do your missions and maybe like have more quest line stuff. That would be something that would take multiple raids, but would be, you know, difficult because of the nature of the mission, less so than the inch, like the difficulties of the bots. Um, and you got to think about the demographic that plays too. I, there is, there is such a more casual player base that enjoys DMZ and grinding missions than the people that play Warzone. Um, and so when you have that mixing of the two, you know, plus the toxicity that Call of Duty brings alongside of it, where you're going to get, you know, quote, I hate the term sweaty in gaming, but yeah. like, let's just use what everyone else has used is like sweaty war zone players yeah. killing someone who just wants to do missions. And then when they plea, then if they like make fun of them for playing or tell them to go back to the lobby, you're like, you're going to alienate people either way, like whatever way they go to balance this, yeah. this mode, you're going to alienate players. And so my biggest counter argument is kind of just like it is Call of Duty and in other extraction shooters, I think assimilation gave people the preconceived notion that because there's an option to be friendly, that should almost be the default. And I argue against that. I think that people should understand and expect like if I find people like this is an intense situation, like we're either going to fight or whatever. And then, okay, maybe we work it out. Like before all the bullets stop flying and whatever, yeah. we pick each other up or like we decide to, to form this group. Um, but I think that there's a lot of people, a lot of people in the DMZ community that because assimilation exists, almost default to like, why are you a jerk? Why are you shooting me? And um, it's certainly something I get hit with a lot when I engage in PvP on my missions. Um, so DMZ is very much shoot first, ask questions second. And... <laughs> over the several different assimilation changes that they've made, that has either been uh, hurt or helped. So for example, um, they implemented for a very short time where if you killed someone, you could not pick them back up. And so that then made it more of a consequence to this whole shoot first, ask questions, second thing. Yeah. Versus now it's very much a system where it's like, I'm going to put you guys down. We'll talk about it. We'll work it out. And maybe we'll get back up and, and form a team, whatever. And so I, I think because of the way the game currently works, there's, there's not a lot of negative. Like I think people should feel encouraged, like fight, like fight it out. You know, you might lose that mission item or, or lose your loot. Um, but it's better than risking it and trying to be friendly off, off the rip, you know? And yeah. so, um, yeah, anyway, <clears throat> circle back long, long answer short. Um, I definitely think there's a market for it. I personally, I think the PVP makes it fun and exciting and makes it more difficult as a solo pre you know, I, my lens is also different than I play like 30 hours a week. So I get that. Like some people only have a couple hours a week to do missions. And so it can be really frustrating to not be able to make progress because there's like, you know, people just going around wiping the map. Um, so I don't think we're there yet. I think there's balancing that needs to happen. I think there's restructuring of the game mode that needs to happen. And I don't know what that looks like, but I think it's a really complicated issue to navigate. And they've had assimilation since day one. So for the people that say, oh, just take it out, like whatever, there's there's repercussions and implications for their yeah. player base to make big overarching yeah. changes. You know, that's why I think they're trying to do little by little to appease people who aren't 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 pleased with it. But yeah, do you, what attracted you to the to the DMZ content? Honestly, I'd never been a Tarkov guy. Uh, I didn't have a PC that could really run it. And so when I saw Call of Duty was coming out with an extraction shooter, um, I was really interested to just try an extraction mode. DMZ was like kind of one of my first ones. And so um, once I played it, 
immediately I got hit with how intense it was. I think I, there's a video on my channel of my first like raid and I did a mission. I went into a stronghold. I had this thing I needed to ex exfil with. I called my exfil in and at the very last second, a team rolled up in a car, jumped on and killed me. And so like that kind of got me hooked because I realized pretty quickly on like it's high stakes, like more so than multiplayer, more so than Warzone. Yeah. Like there is there is something here that encourages me to prioritize my life over going around and shooting people and so that strategy and, and everything you know i got i got hooked pretty pretty bad and and i'm still that way too people ask me all the time like don't you ever get sick of playing the same game all the time no uh i i, I play off stream i watch streamers when i'm not streaming that are playing the game like i am fully immersed into it and believe in the future of the game mode um but i think that's also kind of the same hype the community has for extraction shooters like i'm really excited to see some of these future ones that are coming out um, Bungie's got Marathon, which is going to be insane uh, based off of what we've seen so far. And to have, you know, another huge studio put their hand in, in the pot and, and, you know, do their take on it. So and I'm actually probably going to go back and check out Tarkov at some point, too, because I know that there's, you know, a huge cult following around that game and it's there for a reason. So I'm very excited to kind of grow and explore this genre more as it continues to develop. Do you think that <clears throat> do you think that DMZ can save Call of Duty? I think it's like it's hard for me because i'm very much in the party of like oh future call of duty like who cares and then i buy it and i play it so <laughs> like i feel like since i i, I could i could see an argument for like a decline in in call of duty for their their quality you know on a case-by-case -case basis like you could do a case study and look and, and and observe differences between titles and which games flopped and which games were reviewed by players um I don't know that it's a nature of I'll say it like this. I started growing out of multiplayer as a result of aging. Call of Duty has been around for such a long point that their player base, I feel like, has undergone some of that as well, too. And DMZ is a step in the direction of doing something different that nobody that has played COD has seen before and experienced. So in that sense, I think it's only natural that they're gonna bring in people who otherwise wouldn't play their game by having a mode like that. Um I don't know if I could be like oh, it's going to save Call of Duty because I don't think I'm the voice that can analytically look from the outside and be like, you know, oh, Call of Duty's doomed. This franchise is going to be like, it's never really been my place. Again, I'm just a guy. Like, I casually enjoy and play all of them. Um, that being said, I certainly would not have played this one the same amount of hours without the DMZ mode or like, you know, with streaming either. Like, even if I wasn't a streamer, like this game without DMZ, I would have done. I would have had done the camo grind for multiplayer. I would have played Warzone with some friends. And at this point in its life, I would not be playing it anymore, probably. So it's, you know, it, I think it's a huge step in. I think it's a huge thing that they've done. And we'll see how well they capitalize on the momentum. But it's probably going to take more modes in the future. You know, I think it's yeah. going to take the I want DMC to be around forever. I love the mode and I want them to support it. But I think as future Call of Duty's come out, it's going to take other unique things to get people to come back. I don't I don't know how long DMZ will be that thing for Call of Duty. I hope it's a long time. I hope they continue to support it. <clears throat> Do you think that DMZ is like Nazi zombies when they first introduced it? Um, it's, it's funny you mentioned that. I had some streamer friends. We were on a call uh, on stream talking about that. They had asked, you know, is this to the same level of like what zombies is? I don't think it's anywhere close. I think if you look at the zombies community and you look at how much of an impact and you know, how many careers were birthed off of zombies alone, but I think it's a time thing. You know, I think it could be. I think that depending on where they take it, but um, I don't. I don't think anything's gonna beat what zombies was for the gaming community. Um, not not from Call of Duty in the same way. Not certainly not in the same way. Um, data wise and you know, how much people enjoy it. Maybe there's an argument after more time, but it's so hard i mean zombies was so big i mean you got to make an argument that it's like one of the biggest things in gaming that's happened and transpired over the last decade or two so at least yeah. in my perspective yeah i mean i i love zombies so that's my problem too i see i see a lot of future application for something like 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 this and if if activision if you know if uh call of duty if they sleep on it that might be an issue right uh mm -hmm. especially on on dmz uh, some of the application I see is even using zombies in DMZ, like that mode that we talked about where it's just a PVE mode. Like there could be zombies there. Like this could, th we could go as deep as, um, uh, what's the other bat battle royale in black ops four. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, gosh, what was that called? Blackout. 
Blackout. Blackout. Yeah. So, uh, like, think about it like that, where there's a lot of POIs, there's juggernauts, there's zombies, there's zombies with the juggernauts, like the AI's fighting off zombies, maybe, maybe even some different cre- creatures, boss zombies, stuff like that. Um, I think that there's a huge application for DMZ. At least I feel like there is, and I and I and I think that where Call of Duty is right now, the state of Call of Duty, I I, I personally think that they are most likely going to sleep on this and not do what they should with microsoft's acquisition of activision i think they might do something with it but there also might be some pushback from people within activision especially if they they keep the same staff i feel like um so uh, you know i'm, I'm not the do all tell tell all but I, I i i think that there's a huge application for this and i and i and i think if they miss it like there's going to be so much potential that's going to be wasted, so, you know, money to be made. It may not be yeah. upfront money. Like, you know, Warzone was just like, look, a new meta. Here's a, here's a skin with, with the gun, you know, and you can get it early without having to earn it. And, you know, oh, here's a skin that, you know, you're invisible in any kind of, you know, darkness and, you know, you, you nobody will be able to see you. Like that's the kind of stuff that I think they were capitalizing on to sell Activision to somebody, whether it be Microsoft or somebody else that they decided at the time. Uh, but I think that I, I think that they need to look more longevity wise versus the short term of just like, here's some short term shit to throw in your face and buy. I've also yeah. said that they're kind of making it like a mobile game sense. Like mobile gaming is where the money's at right now. Like that's where majority of people spend their money. Cause it's smaller transactions. I mean, you sp- spending 10 mm-hmm. or $15 on like a skin is let is less, you know, is more money on like a console or a PC versus, you know, if you're on a mobile game and it's like 20 cents or 90 cents or 99 cents or whatever. Um, you know, they, it's just traditionally, it's like e- like every mobile game that that you know that they have is going to make more money. So I so I think they're trying to transition uh, the you know the console community and PC community into a mobile setting where they're just they're just making the most amount of money that they possibly can uh, off of them. What what are your thoughts on on, on that one? Yeah, um, it's I mean it's it's outside my realm, you know, um, a, a lot of the the conversation around this topic, but I would certainly think like. Time and time again, with Call of Duty titles, a lot of the decisions that have been made have very openly to the community and public felt like they were around money. Um, and at the end of the day, it is a business. So to some extent, I can't even fault them for that. That being said, if like let's just say, for example, DMZ financially was not something that they could continue to support or didn't make sense for them, they're going to scrap it. And they're going to try, you know, maybe they use the things that they learned from this new mode and the reception from the community to format another different type of mode with a future Call of Duty title, right? Yeah. And and they, they try that launch and see how that goes. But I think there's a precedent for that kind of thing, you know, for them to make um, make this great thing, support it while it makes sense, abandon it, make another new great thing. And, and, you know, that worries me just because I do think that what they have here really is special and could turn into a lot. Um, if, if given, you know, the resources and the creativity, like there's, there's some people and and some of that's on, on the people that play the games too. Like whenever they added the superpowers recently, there was nothing but a lot of people that like cried about it. Like, oh, this isn't Fortnite. This is a call of duty game. And my instant thing was like, this was before they were even in the game. It was just after they announced it. I was like, guys, they're never going to innovate and change things up or want to try things if they are just met with like this huge harsh negative reaction before it's even played like you guys are getting worked up and freaking out about this thing that's not even in the game yet don't even understand like the implications of what that could mean and yet you hate it so realistically what do you want then do you just want the same thing over and over again and so i'm a big advocate for them to try things out because i think that there's not going to be good things sometimes right like we're going to get really bad cods or we're going to get like imbalanced things or like modes but through that process i would like to think it's all working towards a general better playing experience um that being said time and time again money grab right and 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 we have to be realistic with with who's running the show and the fact that it is a business and so i don't know what the future looks like and i don't know um you know longevity terms how how things are going to play out but uh the optimist in me says uh, I think that DMZ is really cool, and I think it's one of the biggest things they've done in, in several Call of Duties. And even if it's not DMZ, I think we're going to be getting a mode 
um, or something more substantial that will be around longer as a result of what DMZ has has done. So I, I you know, who knows? I guess at the end of the day, but yeah, I, you know, I, there's no ignoring the money aspect of it for sure. I mean, <laughs> what based off of that, what do you think the current state of Call of Duty is as a whole? You know, I, from my own personal experience, which is usually only the only thing I'm comfortable speaking from, I don't love the state that it's at. But that's because there's elements of the game that don't interest me. And I know that they are big for other people. For example, people that play Search and Destroy and competitively and like they, that's what they love, never really been into it. So like I can't go and say like Call of Duty's doomed. They have like nobody's playing Search and Destroy. That's not true. I just don't play Search and Destroy because I don't find it that, that, that fun and engaging and I don't have that that was never a big thing for me. Yeah. So it's it's hard to gauge when I'm not so fully ingrained with COD. Um, that being said, I would expect like Modern Warfare 3 has got to pull some big stuff. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of a flop COD, I feel like, for me. Like this, Modern Warfare 2 introduced like campaign was like, eh, it was worse than the, the, the original Modern Warfare 2019, but it was like still okay, serviceable for those people that play that. DMZ was a whole new thing that lots of people love and are responding positively to. Warzone 2, overarchingly negative, but like it's there and people are playing it. So like, you know, there's that. And then multiplayer, like they've they've done a pretty good job of supporting it, introducing new modes and like, you know, weapon balancing and things like that, in my opinion. So Modern Warfare 3, I'm like, what is it? Like if they're not contributing back to DMZ, if they're not contributing back to Warzone 2, is it just a story and multiplayer? Like even in Modern Warfare 2, we got raids, like this new kind of PVE playable experience. And so we got so much stuff in Modern Warfare 2 that it makes me anxious to see like if Modern Warfare 3 is not going to play into that and incorporate that in some way. And it's, you know, that's why people were joking about it being an expansion versus like a, you know, its own own thing, which has since been confirmed. Like, no, it's going to be a $70 game. Like, so I just until we get more information on what that looks like in October, November, then it's really I would I'm cautious and I, I I'm scared of how things are going to play out just because I know the history of this franchise and with so many new things from this title, how that's going to play into another game so soon. Like I was a big advocate for the whole two year cycle. I think that one year Call of Duty is kind of like um what you had talked about almost like put something out that's good make some money off of it and then all right we're gonna put this new thing out and now we're devoting all the attention to that so we can make our money off of that and then and it's like if we had that two-year cycle the longer time for like the community to get to the point where we like as a collective think ah yes this was modern warfare 2 like this was that experience yeah. then i think it would be better so i don't know i'm like the optimist in me is believing for the best but i'm also cautious and, and thinking like yep me as a gamer i don't know how many more call of duties i have in me and unless they keep bringing out new modes you know yeah i mean i've definitely had that too where you know uh it's just it's i i've talked about this m many times in other podcasts too but you know i they need to take more of a rock star gta approach where they're just like maybe not 10 years but i'd say five years like you need to bring back like the map packs you know and just like have mm -hmm. zombies map pack with like some multiplayer maps and even like a war zone map they need to put treyarch on zombies and they need to put you know sl sludge hammer on multiplayer in war zone and then have raven kind of just oversee it you know and put in their you know their their whatever for um for you know war, war zone or whatever else but uh the companies in instead of pinning treyarch and Sl sledgehammer against each other making a modern warfare title and then a black ops title like they should be making zombies in one title and a modern warfare title in the same game and just working together i feel like that's going to be a better deal what do you think well and maybe that feels better from a playing standpoint but from a business standpoint is a nightmare you know like it's hard without that extra insider perspective and and data to like know Maybe if they have too many things in one title, their player base is so split that they can't support it enough to continue to get whatever longevity we, we currently do have. Um, so all of this would be speculative for me at this point. But, um, you know, I, I can certainly see an argument for either side. Um, me personally, again, I'm a fan of a longer life cycle of the game as long as it's being supported. Yeah. I think they've done relatively well. But again, my, persp my perspective and experience is mostly in the DMC mode. So when if somebody only plays Warzone and that's like their thing, like, oh, I'm a Warzone player or creator, you know, I their updates may not have been as good and it might not be getting supported the same way that DMC is. And so I wouldn't, you know, no, but that would be my only concern is like, 
hey, we're going to do one Call of Duty for this three year cycle. It's going to have all the stuff that everybody loves about Call of Duty in it. And we're going to try to support each and every mode. I don't know how realistic it is. And I also don't know if people play it for six months and drop it anyway. You know, maybe that's why they're doing what they're doing because they know like six months in, people are going to be sick of this. So, yeah. Uh, do you think there's an application for DMZ to be to have like a competitive scene? <laughs> maybe not, not like an esports level. I think that the game mode could be made more competitive by restructuring and making updates that advocate for adding more incentive to fight real players or adding in more difficulty around, I guess it would be extracting or fighting AI for certain missions in that it would be harder to accomplish. So you'd have to be more competitive to do it. Um, I don't think that's what people really look for in extraction shooters as much. You know, I think people are, are very much, I think it's very different than BR and very different from even like a multiplayer experience. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, it's not to say you can't be competitive. I certainly challenge myself when I'm done doing what the game has given me to do. Like today, for example, I'm going to be getting 100% until they add more content in DMZ. I come up with my own custom challenges to push myself and, and see what the limits are. There's not a ton of room in that for a casual player. That's like a streamer creator thing, though, you know, so... I, I, I think the mode could be more competitive, but right now I think people enjoy it because it's not as competitive, actually. <laughs> it's like a war zone where you yeah. have to be the last alive. It's like, I can go in, not see a single player, do a mission, and get out, and I've made progress, and I'm happy, and I've got gear. And that's, that's, that's that, best I think. Case scenario. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or I can go in, have a pre-made six-man team, rush me off my spawn and wipe me immediately. Exactly. So, you know, I, I think that there's a... Yeah, I, I think it's less competitive currently, but some people are always going to play it like it's, you know... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think a Call of Duty killer exists? Or yeah, will it's Call exist? of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> Call of Duty is they have all the power they need to kill their own franchise. That was the right answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, my overarching experience gaming for, you know, since I was four at this point, like different games have different things to offer. If Call of Duty is not the most fun multiplayer experience at the time, I'm going to be playing some other multiplayer experience. Um, and that changes for everybody. Some people don't do multiplayer. Some people do story games and some, you know, but like within its own community, like the people that play COD, they're going to go to wherever they're having the most fun. And, you know, we talked about longevity being an issue with these Call of Duty titles and then being able to capitalize off their own innovation. I don't think that there is a game out there that's similar enough to capture this demographic in a way that would like outcompete Call of Duty. I just think that people will get tired of it. It's the nature of the game. Like if it's not supported and new enough, they're going to go try other experiences. Um, I just don't think there's enough there that would ever be like, oh, this is the only game I play. I've never met anybody that's like, I play multiplayer seven hours a day and that's all I do. And I don't play anything else. I've only ever met people that play seven hours a day who also play a mobile game in their free time or play Minecraft to de-stress from playing seven hours of Call of Duty a day. Or, you know what I mean? So like, I think players will go to where the fun is. Um, I don't see a lot in the industry right now that makes me think like, wow, this is like COD and it's better. Like, I mean, X Defiant is pretty fun. I was in early testing for that game, um, but it's so different that it's not like, I don't view it as Call of Duty. It's just like a first person shooter. So which yeah. first person shooter am I going to play is really the bigger thing than like, cod killer like if cod can't compete people will play other games but that's cod's prerogative i guess yeah i mean that's that's a, that's that's the last question I, I i had for you i i was uh it was a great co conversation um no i appreciate it. i it's been yeah it's been fun i wasn't i thought today was like a meet and greet and then we'll make a plan for the actual thing oh, so no. to get launched into it i was like no, all no. right head first but, uh, yeah <laughs> i no, apologize been good. i didn't uh, know about that no, that's fine. I'm I'm happy it worked out the way that it did. I mean, it was it was good to you had great questions and it was good to get to meet you and kind of just talk about you know the creative side and the gaming side of it. So I'm I'm just appreciative to have been considered. Like I say to my chat all the time, like I'm just a guy. You know, I I'm my my goals are very much to just be here for people, be personable, make people laugh, and so. Uh, to have an opportunity like this to come and talk shop is, is refreshing because, you know, I did the podcast stuff for a while and, you know, kind of edited that. So, and, and if there's anything you'll learn about me from this, I love to talk. 
So <laughs> give, give me an outlet or a platform. I don't care who's going to see it, where it's going to go. Like, you know, this, this has been, it's been a fun conversation and hopefully I, uh, lived up to the expectations that you had had for this whole thing. So, yeah, I mean, as long as you like to talk, we're good. Um, no, but yeah, it's been, a, it's go. been a great com- co- conversation. Um, is there anything you have any, you have any questions for, for me? That's, uh, that was my next thing. It's always the interview oh, questions that get me. Uh, no, um, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, I think a lot of it uh, probably would be conducted outside of this. Like, okay. you know, I mean, it, like I said, it's been good getting to like know you just from this experience, you know, the transparency. Um, this is like our first conversation. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, anybody that's like listening to this or watching this or wherever this goes after this like encounter. Um you know, they'll, they'll probably be more dialogue back and forth. I imagine. I mean, you're certainly welcome to like, ask me any questions you have about like, Oh, Hey, how's, how's COD been treating you? Or, Hey, what's, what's been working for you on TikTok? Like I yeah. would welcome you to do that kind of stuff. I'll, I'm a resource and a person. So, uh, but I've enjoyed the conversation and yeah, I'll probably be in like your DMS and stuff. But uh, if I think well, anything, I mean, I'll let you know. I mean, I was going to see if you want to play some DMZ. Pro- probably not today, though. I have a meeting. I have a couple me- meetings today, and I have to get my work work done. But uh, yeah, yeah, I uh, I definitely wanted to play a couple games, maybe a DMZ game. I have an old Xbox One, so it's I, I'm I may not be gotcha. the best performing teammate, but ah. I just f- figured I'd let you know. <laughs> it's not a, it's not important to me, man. I mean, people, people having fun is 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 what, where it's all at, and so um, yeah, I'd be open to it for sure. I I listen. I'm always looking for people um, to collaborate with, and so if you want to get some games in literally i'm at the point now where until the reloaded update we're gonna have no new content so this is when i start to look for people to kind of collab and vibe with and we do a lot more community games and and then also on top of that like custom challenges so yeah we'll uh, we'll work it out cool sounds sounds good um i appreciate the time you sure you have no questions for me nothing <laughs> all right what is your favorite ice cream flavor actually it's it's changed a couple times, but I'm pretty sure it's mint, mint chocolate chip. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh! I see. That's one of those flavors where like I don't meet a lot of people that say that, but then whenever this comes up in chat, they, they all come out, man. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it's like socially people are like maybe <laughs> not they, they're embarrassed about it or something, but then on chat it's like all mint chocolate. That's interesting. Well, I've, have, I've had it once, I think. Have you ever been to Cold Stone? Oh, of course, yeah, dude. Yeah. The the birthday cake re- remix flavor. Oh, I'm like I'm in between <laughs> that and and the the chocolate chocolate the mint chocolate chocolate chip or whatever the hell it's called. Those yeah. two like things. I love those two. Those those are those are my favorite. But like if I had to choose between the mint and the birthday cake, I'd probably choose the birthday cake at Cold Stone. Anywhere else, birthday cake isn't really that good. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm a I'm a my wife's birthday cake. I'm pretty sure some some days hers changes, but I'm boring. It's like you know cookie dough ice cream or like. <laughs> uh cookies and cream strawberry is actually like my real answer but that i got criticized my whole life for for that so <laughs> Stra- <laughs> like, strawberry is like, a solid fla- flavor well it's like you ever seen uh cloudy with a chance of meatballs by any chance that yes. animated movie yep. so there's that they have a neapolitan like setting where it's like it rain it snowed ice cream and like all the kids are in chocolate and vanilla and then there's one kid in strawberry and he's like strawberry is my favorite like, they're <laughs> really, like taking a shot at <laughs> strawberry you know so it's like that's i've always resonated yeah. with that guy that that kid that <laughs> you know but yeah but for yeah. the viewers i this is as you said before a first com- conversation and that's kind of what yep. i've been trying to strive for for the interviews on this channel uh you know being you know just authentic you know me kind of meeting the first time trying to get to know you and then you trying to get to know me same same type of deal and then you know same 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 thing for the viewers that they, they get to know you as a content creator and then you know we could talk about the games and whatever else but i told this i told the same thing to average i definitely want to get you know you back on this too maybe if there's like a gta update that we should talk about or maybe like a dmz update that we should talk about or call of duty update or whatever uh just to kind of get you know more of a conversation going but yeah, I mean, I do appreciate the time, Ben. It's, 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 yeah. it's been great. Absolutely. Yep. We'll uh, we'll we'll talk about it and figure it out. I like to think I'm a go-to guy for for at least DMC related news. But <laughs> if that changes in the future and, and other stuff, we'll uh, we'll we'll figure it out. But yeah, thanks for having me. And um, yeah, if, if any of you guys are looking for a place to hang out and want to want to come watch some DMC action, catch back. So yeah, tell them, tell them where, tell them where where to find you too, and I'll probably put in the uh, in, in gotcha. the video as well. Yeah, so it's just always game time wherever. So twitch.tv slash always game time, TikTok, same thing, YouTube. 
Um, I think the only thing that's different is like Twitter, but I don't use Twitter or X or X, oh gosh, that's X a whole other out. thing. Watch yeah. out, it's X. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes me feel dirty. I feel like I'm at like a, an X rated like kind of content. My favorite thing, I will say, last little tangent. Um, people ask me what I do for a living right now, and I go up to them and I tell them I'm a male online adult entertainer. So. <laughs> Get some fun reactions <laughs> with that with that one. But yeah, Twitch.tv always game times our main platform. If you guys want to come hang out with us, we'd love to have you. 